Welcome race fans to the Hard to Drive 300 presented by eRacer, powered by 900 horsepower as well. Man, we have quite a show for you tonight. Um, you know, I'm going to pull up my webcam really quick. Uh, my name's Brian, and uh, I've got my beer. I'm going to crack it open right now because I'm ready for this race. Uh, I've also got my popcorn ready because this is going to be an absolutely phenomenal show. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll mute our voice chat here. Uh, one moment. Don't need to hear the drivers right now. Um, take this off as well. All right, so welcome guys. And we are going to have an amazing show for you. We've got 43 of the best sim racers in the entire world uh, going facing off tonight with one of the hardest car and track combinations you will find on iRacing period road oval dirt oval dirt road this is one of the hardest and uh, intentionally so so thank you guys so much uh, I see uh, NASCAR fan Kimmy in the chat thank you guys so much for coming out once again and we're about to wrap up an entire week of uh, festivities and uh, you can see here our schedule of events uh, we've obviously covered a lot of ground here we're now on Friday November 13th uh, 9 p.m. the hard to drive 300 300 miles tonight we're gonna do 195 laps around this mile and a half and I can't wait it's uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun and uh, Blake you got a copy I got you loud and clear, Brian. All right, Blake. Uh, Blake's going to be our lead announcer for tonight, um, but uh, thankful to have him in the booth. And uh, Blake, do you have any initial thoughts as we, we're kind of wrapping up warm-up here? Well, I'll tell you the one thing, Brian, is that I'm really, really jealous right now because obviously, you know, being a part of it the last uh, week or so, either being up here in the booth or being out there on the racetrack, um, as much fun as I've had up here, there's really nothing compared to being out there on the track right now and being able to take part in this. I know I speak for a lot of sim racers that are either sitting on the sidelines tonight because they weren't able to be a part of the 43 car field or even those drivers that are out there right now that this is an event they did not want to miss uh, for anything. You see the biggest names in sim racing or the iRacing oval world. Um, from both present day and years past that have come out tonight to be a part of this. And, you know, I wish I could be out there with them, but unfortunately travel, work, all that stuff has to happen. I'm lucky enough to be up here in the booth with you guys uh, to kind of take it all in. Um, but I'm as excited uh, as anybody else tonight to see one of these uh, marquee sim racing events go on. And, you know, like you mentioned, uh, this is an entirely different challenge than what we've seen, and I think that's why everybody is so looking forward to this. All 900 horsepower is what this car can produce or about to it, and um, obviously it's provided a big challenge for these guys. And coming out to a track at Atlanta, which is notorious for just eating away at tires, uh, it, it, it makes it such an incredible combination. These guys are going to be driving more on the straightaways than they are in the corners, and uh, you know, I think we're we're all going to be the the beneficiaries of it tonight, being able to watch it and uh, see truly who the best sim racers are. Because I think that's what a lost uh, a lot is lost in the current conversation of sim racing is, you know, so much of it is about the package or you have to run this line. Well, here tonight, the real drivers get to prove themselves, and after they've been saying for years, well, we're put in a box. This is their opportunity to break out of it and really show who's who. Just perfectly well summed up there, and uh, just reminding the drivers really quick that uh, they're going to be gridding soon, and uh, they're going to be sitting on the grid for about five minutes. Uh, they're, you know, they're going to get out of the groove. Uh, you know, you can see Alan Bowes here; he's leading practice, uh, trying to hang on for a long run. Uh, looks like he's pulling in, but these guys are going to need to set an ignition switch on their wheel or a button or something on their keyboard to shut off their engine so they don't overheat when they first take the grid. Then we're gonna um, gonna have a special grid walk where you know we'll go through uh, the rows one by one as my monitor stand or my uh, <laughs> my microphone stand's gonna fall down. So uh, Blake, hold on, take it away, Blake. I'm gonna mute my mic. Well, 
Got to get all the technical issues. Why don't we welcome in Josh? We still got Josh up here in the booth doing race control. We are going to do uh, something a little bit different tonight in terms of caution flags. Not going to be administratively thrown. We're going to leave iRacing to that. But uh, how are things looking in the tower, Josh? Uh, they're looking good. You know, up here in the booth, uh, we got a lot of things to consider. And the fact that the drivers here are just as good as they are, we're deciding to go ahead and let iRacing take over for those cautions tonight. Um, some of the weather factors, you know, it's going to be a little bit cooler than what we saw in qualifying. It's about the same weather we saw for uh, the last chance qualifiers and uh, the, uh, the the twin races. So I'm um, going to be a little bit grippier, quite, quite a bit faster on track. But uh, that also means there's going to be a little bit more tire wear. So just something to consider. That is the case. Uh, there's certainly going to be a little bit more tire wear out here. Uh, we'll go I'm ahead back, and guys. Kind of... I, I got my monitor or my uh, <laughs> my microphone stand all sorted out, so we're good now. It's nice and tight oh. this time. Awesome. Well, there you go. But uh, to to kind of remind everybody of what we've been going through, this has been a buildup that has really start that really started all the way back on Monday night. 151 drivers uh, ended up pulling an initial qualifying time here to try and get in this race tonight. That all started back on Monday. We also had single car qualifying old style on Tuesday as well. Then, of course, Wednesday night began the first of our twin 125s, of which the back half of the grid was set the top 20 uh, in qualifying times for Monday and Tuesday. It got locked into tonight's race. Then the top 20 from each twin was put in. And then last night, we finally wrapped things up. Three drivers were allowed to race their way in by winning a last chance qualifier. Um, but of course, they get through all the challenges to get here. Uh, both hot hot lappers and long run speed able to uh, qualify their way into tonight. But uh, of course, uh, this is gonna be the biggest challenge, Brian. 300 miles at a track where 20 laps feels like it's about 50 laps long. Yeah, we actually talked to Parker Kligerman before he jumped in the car, and he said uh, he was a little worn out after about eight laps the other night. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I, I remember, because uh, I ran in the second of the twin 125s. Um, you know, I'll just mention it right now. Started 27th, finished 6th, so we'll, we'll get that flex out of the way early. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I remember myself, I was thinking, oh, we got to be around lap 20, 25 of this first run. I looked down at the lap counter, it's lap 12. So the laps here feel about twice as long as they should be, and uh, mm -hmm. it just it, it speaks to how hard this is. And, and even looking out of the practice board right now, we are looking out on the board. I saw somebody out there in Landon's chat asking, did Parker Kligerman uh, make this race? He will be starting in this race in the back of the field, uh, but we'll get to that in a moment. A lot of drivers out here, um, either E-NASCAR, Coca-Cola, iRacing Series stars, or stars of the Pro Series that'll be starting uh, next Tuesday night, both on Podium Esports and on Bottom Split. You can find coverage for that series to see who are the other 20 that will uh, join the current 20 that are, that are in the NASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series next year. So really just a who's who of sim racing made it out here tonight. And again, this is uh, this is their proving grounds, as uh, I'm sure Parker would like me to plug right there. Yeah, and we've got uh, AJ Henderson uh, going to be our pit reporter for tonight. All things pit road will... We'll defer to him for his expertise. Uh, AJ, you almost made the main event. Uh, you ready for tonight, though? I am ready for tonight. I got my drinks. I'm ready to go, just like you, Brian. Uh, <laughs> I've been looking at Pit Road a lot during the, the twin races and the LCQ, and I think uh, from anecdotal experience, you can gain a lot of time or lose a lot of time, in my case, on Pit Road. Um, so I'm very excited to take a look at that tonight and see where... Uh, a race could be won or lost. Yeah, and Seth the Merchant's putting on a show for us guys right now on track. He's uh, giving us a little drift session, showing what the tire model is capable of for a couple laps before he blows a tire. <laughs> you won't be seeing this uh, in the race. He's just uh, putting on a show for the fans in warm-up. That's pretty cool. I tell you what, <laughs> it looks like a Formula Drift car, and you will not see... I, I mean, you'll see drivers sliding around like that, but it won't be intentionally because of how much you have to take care of these rear tires uh, here at Atlanta, but uh, it looks like practice is finally wrapped up. Alan Bose uh, takes down the quickest time uh, 
in that session, but of course we still have a little bit to go here uh, before we get this full 43 car field that was already set either based off of their qualifying times a couple of nights ago or their finishing position uh, in their twin 125s. But we also have uh, the addition of backup cars. Some drivers after their race wrecked across the start finish line. And of course we have driver substitution. So um, a lot, a lot to cover there. Yeah, certainly. Let's uh, pull down the ticker for a moment, and uh, we're going to go to our pole sitter here, uh, do some rear chase action for you. And Andrew Petrini is going to be starting on, on the front row, and we're so excited to have some, some new people, you know, possibly uh, make a name for themselves tonight. Andrew is one of these guys. Um, and Isaac Gann is going to be starting on his outside. Uh, it hasn't gridded yet, but we've got Kane Cook on the inside of row two, alongside Ray Alfala, four-time eNASCAR world champion, uh, in that throwback Pro Geek machine. You might remember that from the uh, 2011 days. We've got Nathan Lyon on the inside of the next row in that 16 car, Michael Cozy Jr. On, his, on the outside uh, in that Dale Earnhardt Jr. inspired throwback, Garrett Liebert. What a beautiful car, JD. That's amazing. Um, I'm so excited to see this car tonight. Uh, Garrett Liebert's uh, a little bit newer to the oval scene, but he's going to be have a good start for tonight. Uh, Colin Keister on the outside. And look at that car. That has been updated since qualifying. Exciting. Uh, Jake Nichols. Wow, look at that blue. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful work by Jake Nichols on that paint scheme, and that that's uh, might be a diecast finalist right there, as well as Tucker Minter. Very, very good scheme, very basic, love it. Uh, Tucker has uh, made the firecracker earlier this year, and he's made this one as well. So uh, you want to take away the next 10 there, uh, Blake? Absolutely. We'll look back to row number six, and it is Jimmy Mullis on the inside, who this is a personal favorite of mine. Uh, Brian, in terms of, uh, of course, I'm going to be biased against my own scheme here, but uh, uh, aside from that, I think this is the best looking car out on the racetrack, and it's a, it's a car that we'll expect to see up front here in that Coca-Cola Toyota. Jimmy Mullis, of course, almost made the final four in the Coca-Cola series this year, so he'll be awfully competitive to his outside. Spencer E. Burns, a nicely painted Dodge, is what he'll be sporting uh, here in this one. Directly behind them, it'll be Keegan Leahy, who will start on the inside of row number four. Or, um, Amuka Esports, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, their own Brad Wright will start to the outside of row number seven. You move another row back, another driver that made their way through in through qualifying of Burton Kligerman Esports partner in Briar LaPrad. And to his outside in 16th will be Liam Brotherton in the, uh, I guess we won't call it Aflac Ford Fusion. Uh, because obviously he replaced it with Liam, but you can get the uh, Carl Edwards, uh, I guess, a tribute right there. Bobby Zielinski, of course, uh, man we know for road courses, and Brian works with quite often the virtual racing school. He'll start 17th, 18th will go uh, to another driver we'll see in the first series starting on Tuesday, Brian Mercurio. 19th will go to Tyler Gary and rolling off 20th uh, and another beautiful Jeff Gordon paint scheme. That'll be Brandon McKissick. Yeah, we got Corey Carpenter, a uh, twin 125 winner, uh, in a fantastic photo finish from the, you know, with the guy that's starting right behind him. Um, just an amazing uh, run to the line there. I hope we see something similar. Ryan Doucette on the outside, Pro Series driver for this year. Mitchell Hunt in that Libra car is going to be uh, rolling off uh, Behind uh, the guy that beat him out in that twin race, uh, Corey Carpenter, and Blake Reynolds, driver for Austin Dillon Esports, uh, alongside Kevin Harvick inspired throwback. Connor Horn uh, joined us in the booth there for a little while a couple days ago. Uh, thank him for that. Uh, he's, he's excited for this one. We've got Adam Gillen, who's uh, having a little bit of connection issues right now. Uh, beautiful paint scheme, though. We'll try to show it real quick. Look at that. And... Let's keep going. We've got Donovan Strauss, a uh, young guy, getting getting his uh, feet wet with some 900 horsepower. Hasn't really done a whole lot of this. Uh, Bob Bryant on his outside. And that's a beautiful eraser paint scheme. Gotta love to see that. Uh, Bob's, you know, a veteran of the service. 
And Eddie Ball Kerner. Uh, that's a paint scheme in inspired by a bowling ball that is going to be sent to uh, Derek Justice. Um, it's got his face on the hood. Uh, one of the most popular schemes, I think, in the chat. Santiago Tires going to be lining up on the outside. Uh, driver for Steve Letart this year in the eNASCAR series. Garrett Conrath. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I overstepped my boundaries there. Let's let you go ahead, Blake. That's all right. Uh, as we continue to try to work through this field, we'll get them fired up here in just a moment. Garrett Conrath will start to the inside of road number 16 in the 31st position. Another great Jeff Gordon throwback uh, alongside him, Colin Bowden. This was originally a backup car uh, after qualifying, and he eventually works his way through the twin 125s. As we'll actually get yep. them rolling here, Will Cooley will start in 33rd, 34th. We'll go to Alan Bose, who posted the quickest time in practice. Andrew Freenage will start 35th, 36th. We'll go to Seth the Merchant, 37th to Brandon Cattell, 38th is Chris Overland. He also went to a backup car after crashing in the twin 125s. Dylan Alt is 39th, 40th goes to Anthony Burroughs, 41st Danny Hansen Phil in for Kevin King in that uh, throwback machine that harkens back to the DWC days for him. Eric Smith will start 42nd, and this is where my car is starting, uh, Brian. We uh, It's obviously going to be biased towards me. The Thank and E-Racer today, Chevrolet, going to be piloted uh, by Parker Kligerman after a driver substitution. After I put this car 6th in one of the twin 125s, would have started about 26th. Uh, the driver's sub is Parker Kligerman for that ride as he is going to start in the back of the field. But we are ready to set this thing as Petranek going to start up front. Green flag is out for the hard-to-drive 300. Man, I've never been more excited for a sim race, I don't think. This is, uh, this is going to be awesome. As we see this field kind of spread out a little bit, I uh, wasn't expecting that, but it looks like everybody's going to take it a little bit easy. 500 to win race, you know, might as well. And of course, I think that's going to be kind of the, the name of the game here early on. We saw it a lot in the qualifying races uh, as well, that drivers are more than willing to take their time to try and be safe. And it looks like they're going to do that here. It'll be Petranik who, again, Brian, this was a bit of a surprise. We, we see so many names out here. And even those of you out there watching, uh, wherever you may be watching, we have a whole uh, host of <laughs> channels that are taking in this one andrew uh is not a name that we've seen very often uh when you talk about the top competitive ladder here in the oval side of the sim racing world but he was able to come out and not just get the pole but do it uh, by a long shot over again a, a full field of some of the best that we've ever seen in i race yeah and we you know we missed a, a an amazing command but uh we're gonna do a, a quick little uh impromptu gentlemen start your engines because uh, I think that that's uh, certainly worthy of a prestigious event like this. <laughs> Obviously the engines are already fired but uh, we thank uh, Kevin James for that amazing uh, command that he did back in the day. Uh, I got a recording of it earlier. And we're just kind of cranking it up right now. I'm really just letting these TV3 cameras work. They are, but you know, one thing that I'm looking at, Brian, is we can go all the way back. There is a huge gap between Ryan Doucette in 24th back to Blank Reynolds, who runs in the 25th position. And look at those guys all the way back in the pack jockeying for position side by side, about six or seven rows deep. That's about 27th <laughs> on back. And that's what we're going to see a lot of with a hyper competitive field like this. Uh, you're going to see side by side and pretty hard battles that are going to go on. Uh, even back here uh, at the tail end of the field, it's Santiago Tierras and Bob Bryant right now. And this is just outside the top 30. Yeah, this is, you know, where people are really just trying to field each other out. Like, you know, there's 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 a lot of tire saving involved. You got to you got to manage your tire sets. You got to. Make sure that you, you, you don't overdrive, overdrive that right rear, otherwise it's just going to fall off a cliff. So I think everybody had the same idea of underdriving, saving their tires, and um, everybody's kind of stepping on each other's toes because everybody's going about as slow as each other, you know, thought that they were going to go. But, man, wow, I'm eating popcorn. Hey, I, got, uh, I got some 
little breaking development story here. Uh, Nathan Lyon actually missed the grid and is currently only about four seconds ahead of Andrew on the track. Uh, oh, you're going down a lap down early. Yeah, that number 16. Oh, shoot. That, that's not good. I think uh, might have had some issues. He was on the grid earlier, so he might have had some issues uh, maybe potentially with uh, starting his engine back up. It's very, very possible. Uh, hate to see that, though, for Nathan. Now, I will have to say, though, you see this 16 car this far ahead of the field at a mile and a half like this. Does this not feel like that Nathan Lyon could, could potentially be in the lead right here? Oh, yeah, it certainly could. But uh, nobody's going to get out to that far a lead without paying the price. So uh, we've got Petranic, who is, you know, relatively a, a, a newcomer to... I think the iRacing oval scene, uh, I don't know how many starts he has in total, but um, I've been talking to people who used to race back in the NASCAR Racing 2003 days, and Andrew Petranik was one of the most successful drivers on that platform, and uh, he's showing it right now. He's uh, going out, setting the pace, and um, obviously got the pole for this event, beat about 175 drivers over, over you know, coca-cola series like drivers that have won hundreds of thousands of dollars he's just pulling away from them right now yeah i don't know how long that is gonna last there's just something in me uh brian obviously you, you gotta tip uh, give a tip of your cap to a guy that's able to come out here and compete like this but we've seen and again th i think this is one thing brian that coming into this race it was almost a disadvantage we heard a lot of these guys that qualified in the top 20 for this race they didn't get to run the the about 90 some odd laps in the twins in green flag conditions against competitors racing through traffic and i think this might be one of the results of it that andrew mm -hmm. petranik doesn't have that long run experience against everybody and maybe he just doesn't know that mm. uh he could be pushing it too hard right now i won't well, uh say that he is uh, I, but I'll, obviously yeah I, pulling away from a lot of really good drivers that could be the case i actually talked to andrew uh blake and he did the practice race uh, last night so uh he said that he had issues with his long run pace so maybe He's choosing to just go as hard as he can, maybe catch a yellow um, at, at an opportune time. Um, it's, it's tough to say right now. Maybe he's just going the pace that he thinks he needs to go to save that, those tires. Uh, it just, it, I, I have to imagine, though, that these guys in, in second on back are going to start reeling them in, though. Andrew, uh, on the last lap, actually tagged the, the wall coming into turn one. He has a little bit of damage on my end. It won't affect his speed at all, but... Something to look at. He did tag the ball just a little bit last lap. Yeah. Let's find some. Oh, wow. We got uh, Jake Nichols up into... What is... Is he make a move on the outside there? Yeah, it looks like it. And, you know, that's a move that we're going to see a lot later on. And even personally, a move that I found uh, to work for me uh, working up through uh, the field later in a run is that middle line, especially about lap 30 or so is when you're really going to start to see that middle come in the bottom is just again we're we're talking so much about rear end grip and once you get later in the run you're pinching a guy on the bottom you can get them so loose that you can just carry so much speed into the middle and then of course uh, all the momentum you carry down the straightaway that um, I think that middle line especially about lap 25 lap 30 that's going to be a, a primarily passing groove you don't want to run it right there or right now because of how much you may lose uh, and it may weigh your tires a little bit more but I think uh, eventually you're going to see that middle line really come into play uh, over the long run and uh, uh, I'm sorry go ahead Josh I was gonna I was gonna mention some of one of the interesting things about this field I think this is the most amount of pro licenses I've seen in one field outside of a coke series race uh, so this is pretty incredible and speaking of pros we actually have somebody in the booth who uh, can give us a little insight on driving these cars in real life Landon Castle you got us hey Josh thanks thanks for uh, bringing me in I'm I'm watching this race this looks like a real life race from Atlanta about 10 years ago yeah, it certainly That's does. awesome. <laughs> uh, so, Landon, I, I think you've been following a little bit the last few days. Do you have a favorite for this race, or are you just, you know, tuning in? Well, of course, my sentimental favorite is Parker Kligerman driving the Thank It Eraser Today car, because uh, I do believe that I drove that car at Atlanta uh, with this generation race car. 
<laughs> uh, so <laughs> I know what he's feeling right now. And actually, where is he running? Looks uh, like right, he's 41st is where I have him on the scoring pile. It started back there in 43rd, but Parker was doing a long run in practice. He was able to get to about 47 laps, which, you know, I haven't seen a lot of guys been able to go that long before they blow some tires. So, you know, Parker was uh, was definitely trying to hone in that long run speed, but I think he's just taking it easy right now. Yeah, and so I'll, he, I did, was, he did start I shotgun was... on the field, Landon, so okay. not, not too yeah, bad. He needs to climb through. I, I was... So I was curious. I wanted to ask you, Brian. What what is the window right now? I mean, because you yeah. you switched to this is gonna be i racing cautions. So yeah, what, and what are we looking at for green flag stops? It, are we gonna see some short pitting or? I think we will. Um, I think if this thing starts to have a green flag look, you might see guys start pitting as soon as lap thirty. Um, if they've overcooked their right rear tire, um, it could be even sooner than that. Uh, but I, I think that, you know, you've got the ability to go about 58 laps on, on a set of tires and, you know, fuel. They both run out at, a basic, at basically the same time. What, what's the difference lap time-wise between a guy on 30 lap, you know, the 30 to 50 laps, and then the guy that pits on lap 30 and puts on fresh tires? What is that? That's going to be about three seconds a uh, lap. So, and wow. it could be potentially four if people really, really start struggling. Um, the thing is, you have so a lot of. A lap. Why would you go to lap 50? So, the, the, the thing that you have to consider about this, Landon, is there's a lot of fall off from lap one to say about lap 15. You lose about two seconds in that span. So, you're not, okay. it's not a linear fall off like you might imagine. So, so all your fall off is in the first 15 laps, and then it's pretty flat from there on, or or it's, it's kind of tapers a little bit. Which, by it, the way, we just got an awesome raid from Jaybo on, on my stream here. Oh, awesome! Thanks, <laughs> Thanks cool. Justin. Well, um, I will say, uh, if you if you save your tires pretty well, it kind of tapers off. But if you go a little bit too far, the cliff can be massive. Uh, we're talking. At the the last five or six lap laps of the run, you may be giving up two or three tenths every single lap thereafter mm -hmm. uh, if you run that, those rear tires off a little bit. At least from what it, you know, I saw the other night. Yeah, and uh, you know, Ray Alfalo just made a really great pass there on the outside of Colin Keister. He he's, looks like he might might be trying to make a move on Kane Cook here as. It looks like Petranic is starting to fall off, guys. He, his last lap was a 33-32, and the guys behind are running 21s and 22s. So uh, I think that Taco Bell machine is finally starting to uh, feel the effects of that hard driving. I think so, too. But look at all of our top three competitors, uh, for the most part, are all running in the middle group. Petranic's done it as well. You see Kane Cook and Ray Alfala, who have all kind of migrated about half a lane up um, from the bottom. It's about lap 20. I didn't think we would see this this early, but obviously um, it's working for both Ray and Kane. Uh, they're starting to reel in for training about two tenths a lap right now. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's really looking a lot like uh, real life, Landon. I mean, talk about that. It's it's just it's amazing. I, I, I personally thought that this race gonna, was going to be gridlocked more like the twins, but everybody's taking it way easier this race. Yeah, they're really clean right now, which I love to see that. I mean, that's that's like the style of a of those mid two thousands NASCAR intermediate tracks. The first stretch of the race just gets spread out. Everybody gets settled in. Uh, you can see the track opening up the groove just a little bit here in Atlanta. I mean, I, I love seeing that second groove um, in turn three and four at Atlanta. It's a really it's a tough one to run um and it's kind of a sneaky groove because you see so many people go up to the wall Ooh. and then some people paint the white line tucker oh, mentor making you know. a good move here on the outside yeah, of well, colin keister you can, you can see that line that tucker's running where you put your right sides right on that seam um there's a lot of grip right there if you hit it just right um in real life and i think it, it obviously is working the same in i racing so um those seams make a big difference at atlanta I mean, that, that track on the pavement is so old um, mm -hmm. Those seams sometimes have more grip than the pavement itself. 
you have to even think, Brian, this is, uh, and Landon, this is pretty much the around the time period where this racetrack was scanned, too. It's not like we, we've had a recent scan of Atlanta where it is super bumpy. So this is pretty much <laughs> almost an exact replica of that track that you would have been racing on about 10 years ago. Right. Got a lot of great battles around the whole track. Uh, looks like Brandon Cattell side by side with his uh, Slipangle teammate uh, Santiago Tires. Man, uh, Jake Nichols whipped up that scheme for Brandon Cattell today, and that one looks really nice. Uh, we'll get a close up on that yeah, it one. Does. And you, you know, know we so, we we're we're so used to thinking throwback, and maybe this is because we're all getting old, but. Uh, when we think throwback, we, we throw back to the 70s and 80s and 90s. But, man, <laughs> it's so cool to see throwback schemes of cars that we ran just six, seven, ten years ago. And Brandon was a little bit uh, upset with me before the race. I made him go to a backup car um, because after his twin race, he tried to pull into the garage area, and there's an invisible wall there. So he damaged the front end. I said, okay, that's a backup. Oh, he, no. didn't, he didn't quite agree with that and you know on second thought i think that i agree but uh at at the end of the day it only cost him six spots on the grid so he understood and we're, we're glad that he's uh, such a great sport about it <laughs> and not to mention he's up five already so he's only one spot behind where he would have started already yeah and uh let's move ahead a little bit here we've got uh got some big movers in this race let's uh try to pull up the amount of of positions they've gained on uh, the ticker here. I could tell you right now, um, Danny Hansen is, he's on a mission to get towards the front. Uh, he started towards the back of the field, what was that, in the about 40th or so? Around there, and uh, he's already gotten 12 positions on track and continuing to move forward. Looks yeah, like we're I... going to get a pass for the lead here, guys. Oh, yeah. Here comes Kane Cook to the inside. Yeah, I think this is where Petranik really kind of realizes uh, that he may have run his car a little bit too hard because he pulled out to about a two and a half second lead and all of a sudden that's gone in an instant. And King Cook, now the leader of this race. I got to say, though, some of the guys that were making up time, I think uh, I think you got Jake Nichols and Isaac Gann kind of waiting here behind uh, Petranik, who may be falling through, obviously, Ray Alfalo, which... I mean, my goodness, if you didn't pick him to win this race, I don't know I don't know how you can pick against him with all, how much success he had in these cars uh, back in the day. But um, I think there's a couple of guys that started up front here who may be pulling kind of what we saw Garrett Lowe do the other night, you know, kind of over-saving a little bit. And uh, with the caliber of drivers in here, this race could go green for a very, very long time. So saving like that, I think, uh, is easier to do in these races with how long it's going to be. Uh, than it may have been in the twin 125s the other night. It, you know, Blake, it's a good note, though, for these guys that it took 30 laps. I mean, not in, yeah. in, he's still leading the race here, so uh, more than 30 laps for them to get back up to him, and they still haven't really challenged him for the lead quite yet. No, I think you're right, and of course, with uh, the tire sets that we have here, we have 12 sets sitting on pit road, so this is, you know... Dale Jr. sitting on, sitting with Goodyear Eagles just stacked around his pit stall here. Everybody's got the same set. So, I mean, we would already run. I mean, what that could get you, if I could do my math correctly. I mean, that's you got plenty a little time. over. <laughs> yeah, 15, 15 lap runs. So um, if Petranic were to ever get these kind of, you know, yellows where maybe we're going 10 or so laps and everybody's having to come down, um, he's obviously shown that he can pull out a little bit to a lead. So it's definitely a balancing act. Yeah, and right. look at a... Man, look at the line that Kane's running right right now. We're we're looking at Kane, your race leader, and Kane Cook. And um, man, he's especially in one and two down here, guys. He's way way up the track. It's uh, it's remarkable to see. Look at him. He's all the way in that second groove, or in that set above that you know that first scene. That's pretty good, you know. Considering uh, is that just the product right now? I mean, and maybe talking iRacing specific for a minute, because um, we know that dynamic track is a is a great conversation to have is this just a product of so many green flag laps with 43 cars on the track no cautions to cool the track down i mean are, are we seeing the most of what the dynamic track has to offer right now 
Uh, you know, from the from the racing I did earlier, and even the individual testing I did, it, it just seemed to be you, you just got so loose on the bottom later in the run, trying to wrap it around the white line and killing the rear tires off. That with how hard you can charge the corner in these cars, you're you're just not you're you're just not sliding the rear end as much on exit, and um, it's a much smoother transition on the straightaway, which. You know, I think that's probably the most interesting thing about this race, Landon, is, and you can speak to it as well, that I think these cars, from what I drove the other night, they are hard, much harder to drive on the straightaways than they are in the corners. I, I do want to point out, though, that Landon did raise a good point. The, the track temperature is already up 5 degrees from when we started. We started at 131, and it's already up to 136 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's, uh, it's getting warmer, that's for sure. Yeah. And that's about what we had in qualifying, isn't it? It was 139 in qualifying. As I'm sorry, I've, I had beer in my mouth. But <laughs> uh, we so uh, don't I, apologize. I think yeah, no, that's nothing to apologize for. I think the the main reason the outside is working is just how loose these cars are off the corner, and you need all the track you can possibly get on these long runs to to you know just kind of. You, you, you're just keeping that wheel so still and just barely moving it off that turn. And if you have to crank on it a little bit, that right rear kicks out and you just you lose all the run. Whatever run you got through the center is gone if you've got a car on your outside. Oh, you can see Ooh. how much right hand wheel oh. is. I'm starting to look out now. I looked out at Andrew Freenage. He's back here in 37th, and oh man, is he struggling. We're we're starting to see now. If you if you ran your rear tires too hard, we are starting to see guys sliding all over the place, particularly in the tri oval. And these are guys like uh, Anthony Burroughs won our Twin 125 the other night. That just goes to show how competitive this this field is. Granted, he did start in the back, but. Man, it's it's so hard to, to make progress when the entire field. I, I mean, the the first 33 cars are only separated by eight and a half seconds right now. I, I want to. Uh, that is that's crazy. Uh, last lap around, I don't know if you caught it, but Isaac Gam made a little excursion with his left side tires through the infield grass, so he's getting a little squirrely off of turn four. I'll tell you one guy that's on the move that I really have my eye on right now is Jimmy Mullis. He's been kind of waiting back there in the 7th or 8th position, started in 11th, is up to 5th. He made his way by Isaac Gann uh, after he slid off the corner, but uh, right now that Coca-Cola Toyota Camry uh, is looking awfully sporty. And um, it, You know, one thing, Brian, that I didn't think we really expected when we started doing this was how much... Uh, the draft comes into play here that you e even when you're in traffic you, you almost kind of want to run uh, behind people because I guess just with the aerodynamics and the way the car tomorrow works in I racing there's just it just operates like a box and just punches such a huge hole in the air AJ do we uh, do we have somebody taking pit road right now we do yes we do yeah it is oh that no we got somebody hunt. somebody took out the cone Oh, we got two people on pit road. Mitchell Hunt is coming off. Uh, let's see. Looks like we got Jarrett Liebert on Jarrett pit road, Liebert. the number five. Car. Jarrett Liebert hit the cone, so that's going to be a penalty for Jarrett. Oh man, that's a tough break. Uh, Looks like it was a lot more. Chris Overland just called that he's coming to pit road. Now, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, it, I would imagine that these first couple cars that come in are going to drag the rest of the field in with them. Uh, I, I would. You know, anybody that's really thinking about their strategy, man, I'd be surprised if somebody goes in la five, ten laps longer than the rest of the field. I mean, that's you could lo you're going to lose almost a whole lap. Well, yeah. I, I think if they're going to pull that strategy, they're not so much looking to make up time. They're looking for uh, these guys don't know how to pit with this car because it's so difficult to get on pit road. I mean, we saw Parker Kligerman the other uh, the other night, he overran uh, the pit road entry under caution because these we, things are just, they don't slow down very well. So we could be seeing, a I, I guess you would be hoping for an accident at that point. We still see a bunch of cars making their way onto pit road. And those oh, guys a green flag I, stop oh, on, on man, 40 lap tires. So oh, man. Man. <laughs> I think we that? might have some black flags from these pit road entrances, oh, guys. Man. And just point, pointing out that it was the front three that just pulled down pit road. So we got about a tenth, and we're going to have a large group here pitting right now. Oh, yeah. Now. Petranix on pit road, or pole sitter. 
okay, this Rose is getting busy right now. Landon, this is what you wanted, man. This is what I wanted. I wanted to see green flag stops. I want to see it cycle through and see how this works. And one thing I will point out that's very interesting in the uh, in, in the twin races we had a competition caution at lap 39, and as as soon as uh, lap 37, 38 hit, we started having people pull down. So it looks like people are going to try and split this up into 40 lap runs if they can. Yeah, it certainly. Looking might. like that's the case. That's what they're used to, and uh, of course, like you said. Um, I just think there's so much time to be lost uh, getting back up to speed. Now, of course, with the huge time difference, uh, you know, I've seen it plenty of times as a sim racer myself. You, you, you pull up on a car when you're three seconds faster, and just because of that, uh, something happens, and, you know, obviously a caution comes out because you come up on somebody so fast they just can't anticipate it. Yeah. And I think that's what we're seeing here. Uh, a couple of guys trying to make their way by some guys that are still running in the top ten. Yeah, I'm pulling up this calculator, guys. So 195 divided by 4 is 48.7. So we're going to see another wave of cars down pit road, I believe, at lap uh, 48, 49. Um, they're going to be splitting this up into four uh, different pit stops, or four, four segments. So they're going to make it a three-stop race. The guys that pitted before then on lap 40, they might be trying to maybe add an extra pit stop to their, to their strategy. We're having... The field work its way through those those cars that did get tires are now working their way through their leaders and I I can say that the leader out of uh, right before this whole cycle started Kane Cook he was on pit road for 40 seconds longer so he got an excessive speeding penalty. Chris Overland just got held up a ton behind those yep. those cars. And it, that's the one thing you don't take that that's hard to consider when you are short pitting is. Um, you know, you think that you're going to make up all that time on fresh tires, but you end up with, in a lot of traffic, and you can lose four or five seconds off of what you thought you were going to gain. Um, just if, if you get held up four or five times and you lose a second for each lap, uh, or maybe less than that, and it, it definitely can cost you. The the lead is tightening up, Landon. We've got Jimmy Mullis, Ray Alfala, Isaac Gann. Uh, they're all right under a blanket here. They, uh, this is... This is going to be such a close race. And look, you can see that how fast the cars are who have taken tires. They're just storming through the field. And the 26 car had just pulled down to pit road on lap 44. Going to be working, probably doing four tires here in oh, field. As Bose, oh, Overland, Bose and Overland go by with those fresh tires. Jammed it in there. In the yeah, he did. Three. And thankfully, Ray gave him room. We could have just had our first yellow of the night there. Oh, we about had an oh Anthony Burroughs pit directly in front of uh, it looked like that was the 09 of Eric Smith. That was about a caution. That see that's the other thing I think these guys are playing that strategy because you know, let's say you get a caution right here. Everybody do you do you even take the wave around? I, I mean of course the obvious answer seems like yes, but you're gonna be so much slower if you take the wave around and you have ten lap fresher tires and everybody else just pulls away, and you may get lapped and uh, really no time. So this is what I think a lot of these guys in the top half of the field are trying to do is kind of take these guys that are really fast and trap them a lap down. And, Brad, and uh, new leader, Brad Wright, has just taken the lead over Ray Alfala, and he's he's still on the same tire strategy as everybody else, obviously, um, but he's up 13 positions from his starting spot. And Keegan Leahy just pulled down to pit road as well. That's going to be happening. And, and off of Blake's point, you gotta you gotta take the wave around. You you just you know cautions oh. breed cautions. You gotta hope it happens. Yeah. It's gonna be a, you know it's that's, that's kind of a bet you gotta you gotta make there. That's a really really tough call. I would you know imagine if we do have a yellow, it's possible to have another quick yellow. But I'd also hate to be so much slower. Um, yeah, well, you also got to think, you know, if you're just racing for the lucky dog, everybody else will lap down. You're, you're the only one on fresh tires. You would easily be the lucky dog in that scenario. So there's a, there's a couple of different ways you could attack that. We're going to have a huge group of cars coming down pit road. Burns, Alfala, Mercurio. Oh, looks like anymore. That Parker. No, I, I, I couldn't tell who that was. Oh, they're all coming. Look at them. We got a ton of Whoa. cars on pit road. Whoa, Man. Almost lost it on entry there. That was... About as dicey as you can get it. All right. What did I say, guys? What lap is it? <laughs> lap 50. All right. This is the second yeah. strategy. Gosh, 50 laps is a long time on those tires. 
Bree Cooper in my chat asked if uh, somebody threw bacon grease on pit road entry. Was that you, Josh? <laughs> uh, well, I cannot confirm or deny anything, but uh, this this section was brought to you by Smithfield Food. Nathan Lyon. <laughs> I'm interested to see where Nathan Lyon shakes out. He waited a decent amount of time to come in. Uh, we'll see if he loses any time in the leaders. He's only about five seconds ahead of the leaders before pit stops, so we'll see if he's able to stay ahead of him once he comes out. So is that everybody cycling through now? Is there anybody left? Uh, we have seven cars yeah. out. Yeah, Bobby Zielinski, Michael Cozy, Donovan Strauss, Liam Brotherton, Bob Bryant, and Parker Kligerman, as well as Eric Smith, they have not yet come down pit road. And I have to apologize to Bobby because he flat out just drove around those guys. I thought he was on new tires. He actually was on the same strategy. At this point, in my opinion, if you're if you're staying out, I mean, you're really just hoping that the chaos of these green flag stops are going to cause a caution. I mean, it, it, there can't be a strategy. The thing is, staying out on as old a tires that that is actually going to work out. The thing is, Landon, I I think that the way the the fall off is not linear, that lends itself to this longer strategy. So you very uh, well might might be able to do something it's just uh, an extra pit stop uh i don't know i don't know what the correct answer is and obviously the drivers don't know either because one of them's right and one of them's wrong <laughs> well and i gotta say and i know this is something entirely different it was the same thing that kind of put me in victory lane uh in your rainout race uh a couple of months ago all the way back in may at charlotte was if the draft is a benefit it, it almost kind of helps you more to maybe give up a little bit of time, losing time on those tires, eventually you take fresh ones and the draft and your tires kind of pull you up a little bit quicker uh, than what would what it would typically be. So I, I think there's something to be said for, for that. Although, of course, this is a little bit different here, we're, uh, we're, what we're dealing with. We're, we're looking at Bob Bryant here. He's clocking 3426s, um, our leaders. Oh are and and parker kligerman i believe is also not pitted eric j smith has also not pitted um there's three cars out here that haven't pitted and right Take now they're uh, they're about three seconds slower lap so they're just flat out in the way um oh is bob bryant saving a little fuel there i thought i saw i heard him clutch it's, it's interesting here bob bryant and parker kligerman you could say our teammates uh Bob Bryant drives for Parker in the eNASCAR Coca-Cola series. So I'm curious if there's a you know group effort here to try and make something happen on the track. Well, I mean, we're getting to... Yeah, we're getting to the point. They're one, two. We're getting to the point. Do you think about... If you can go another 10 laps or so, you're thinking about a just a two-stopper. Yep, he's clutching. Uh, he's, clutching. he's clutching. Bob's, yeah, Bob's so definitely saving fuel. And you got to think, okay, so are they losing a ton of time right now? Yes, there's no doubt about that. But you got to think on the flip side of this, everybody else is going to pit a little bit sooner, and you just continue to add to that advantage. If you stay out 20 laps longer uh, this time, that means you're staying out almost 40 laps longer by the second time it cycles through. So, uh, again, maybe they're just trying to pull something. Parker really had nothing to lose starting in the back of the field, so... Um, you know, he's just trying trying something different. The drivers on that first strategy, uh, Chris Overland, uh, a couple other drivers, they're only seven seconds from t retaking the lead from Bob Bryant. So clearly going to go, uh, obviously, one lap down. Probably, it's possible if he keeps doing this, two laps down. So in, in, uh, in ill-time, right uh, Bob just did a 34-51. So, Tucker and, Minter just took over second place. He looks like he's going to be taking the lead here pretty soon. And what are his lap times? He's run, he just ran a 33-0 while Bob Bryant ran a 34-5. So Tucker so Minter, that's half quicker. Tucker that's Minter not, is the first driver. Bad. Yeah, he's the first driver that pitted mm -hmm. on the lap 40 strategy, approximately, give or take. Um, right now, let's see. He's got... Uh, let's take a look and see how he has 17 laps on his tires. He's doing 32.98 right now. That last lap. Wow. I want to want to point out uh, for Pixley. anyone who's a Jarrett Liebert fan or Liber, he uh, he has left the session uh, and is now position 43. If you're curious, what happened to him? Yeah, and uh, you know he he told me earlier today he had some storms rolling through, so it's uh, likely that 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 might have been the cause of that. Sadly. Well, Josh would know all about that. <laughs> <laughs> no lightning here yet, so uh, knock on wood. Uh, we'll keep those thunderstorms a little bit offshore today. 
now, Brian, I, I'm I'm intrigued with the strategy right now. I so am too. Realistically, what what is what is the fuel window? The fuel window can probably be extended out to maybe be maybe lap 62 or 63 if you if you like saved from the beginning. I would anticipate. Let's see what lap Bob is on right now. His stint. He's on lap 59, so he should be coming down pit road any moment. Hey guys, uh, Eric Smith is coming down pit road right now. He was the one oh, of the three. Oh, he lost it. Ooh. Oh, he made it in. Is that his like. pit stall? Uh, he it. Oh man. <laughs> no, I had to back up a little bit. He's gonna lose. It's gonna cost time. him even more time that he was already losing. Yeah, the track. that's not. That's not good. Oh man, what a good recovery though. That was pretty nice. Those, yeah. uh, when you're in one of those early pit stalls, they sneak up on you real quick. Yeah, that's one thing with Kligerman. He's all the way back in 43rd, so he is the first pit stall. So uh, I don't think he'll be overshooting entry this time. And you see he's going to come on pit road right now. Oh, yeah, he's going to miss it. He's going to have to back up a little bit. Uh, apparently, it's hard to stop on 60-lap old tires. <laughs> Even if they stick with, I mean, looking at green to the end here, not that, I mean, we're really early for that, but... That still puts him in a position to have to pit with 15 laps to go, which is kind of awkward. Yeah, it certainly does, but um, a timely caution, you know, for 500 bucks uh, could could pay, play dividends, but I, I just don't know how long it's going to pay off. You know, this first run, it's it paid off. You know, they were out, out in the lead. They expected maybe to get a yellow. Um, they didn't get it. Uh, maybe maybe they expect a yellow this next cycle, but I don't know how long they're going to be in, in the lead in that scenario. Uh, Bob's coming in this time by. He's going to be pitting about halfway down pit road. All right, let's see. Let's take a look at Bob Bryant's pit entry here. We've got a nice camera angle down here on pit road. Here he comes. Nice and smooth. That's one of the that's smoothest. A yeah, that's a smooth pit entry. You, you got to think these guys are almost on the verge of blowing tires, so, I mean, that could be something for either Parker or Eric is, you know, you're coming down to pit road, you're locking up. I, I mean, I got to imagine those tires are maybe 15, 10% away from blowing up, but just a little lockup might be enough to uh, to do it. So lucky that Bryant was able to figure that out and enter really, really smooth there. Which looks like Parker must have already pitted. Yeah, Pete. Yeah. Yeah, a couple yeah. laps, yeah. yeah missed his stall a little bit so that'll cost him a little time but tucker minter uh leading the charge with this uh 40 lap strategy um so let's let's go ahead and we'll divide 195 divided by four there um so right now as as we sit by the way there are five cars one lap down uh of which three of those are the people who stayed out till lap 60 as well as nathan lyon and kane cook uh, Kane Cook is the one who got that 40-second uh, penalty. And, you know, the Tucker Minter is 24 laps into his stint. Um, he's on a four-stop strategy. Ray Alfala, um, let's see, the first driver on um, a four... Let's see. Looks like Keegan Leahy is going to be the first guy on the, uh, the other strategy where they're going to make one less pit stop. So he's in eighth right now. Landon, when you're on new tires, how much of a Superman do you feel like when everyone else is on 10 or 20 lap older tires? <laughs> Say that again, Josh. When you're when you're getting new tires and you're uh, you're going out there, how much of a Superman do you feel like when you're just going a second, two seconds faster than <laughs> everyone else? Oh yeah, it, it, new tires are gold, man, and that's what these guys feel like that are, that are going to be. Oh, I mean, that's what Bob Bryant feels like right now. Other than uh, if he looks at the scoreboard and sees where he's at <laughs> and typing and scoring. Yeah. Other so than that, he feels so like let's let's do a, a Bob Bryant check here. We've got we're, we'll go on board with him right now. Um, it's coming off turn four. He's three laps into his run in 39th place. Uh, one lap down. Am I seeing that right? Uh, correct. Okay. Yes. And I, he's, he's I actually, coming through the field. <laughs> he just ran about two seconds quicker than the leaders. And where is the leader at this point? He's the, coming. Bob's coming off a of turn two right now. The leader's in the middle of three and four. Okay. So, so this is he's got about five more laps till he's gonna unlap them probably six more laps maybe. Yeah, it won't take interesting long. Interesting strategy right now. Seventy-one of Mitchell Hunt, who was the first car down uh, pit lane last time, 
uh, has just gone down pit lane again. So are we going to just see a consistent green flag pit cycle the rest of the race with all of these different strategies playing out? That's a little bit early to be making your second stop. I don't know what Mitchell's idea of that is. Maybe he, you know, burned his tires up a little bit, but... Um, oh, we got contact in turn three. It's Ray Alfala and somebody else. Ray Alf or Keegan Lakey. Keegan. Keegan Lakey is now coming to pit road. Oh, no, he's got damage. Yeah, he got into the right rear of, Kate, uh, of Ray Alfala. Looks like he was trying to maybe get down and get to pit yeah. road. Alfala was there and, uh, yeah, just kind of pancaked Alfala. I don't think Ray will be too hurt by that damage, but uh, interesting to see some guys who know oh. each other pretty well getting together yeah bob uh you know made a made a look uh three wide there with the, the with the new tires had to give room and uh keegan tried to turn in and you know on old tires like this you just can't turn down um you know with a car on your inside or just getting clear of that car on the inside you can't turn down like normal so um it just a honest mistake there um you know I think Bob didn't do anything wrong. Ray and Keegan probably could have done something different there, but definitely nothing intentional there. That's too bad for Keegan. Keegan's uh, Keegan's sitting on pit road, and that's uh, gosh, I hate to see that. That's uh, that's too bad. Keegan was having a great run, and he was probably going to sure. challenge for the win here. As a, another update for uh, Bob here, he is now the uh, he's the lucky dog. As long as uh, Tucker doesn't pass anyone else for a lap down, he is two and a half seconds behind Tucker and about to get his lap back the, the hard way. Yeah, he, the challenge is it, once more people start pitting, he's going to lose his lucky dog position um, as the you know, 10, 15 place cars start getting into their second cycle. Uh, guys, Ooh. Keegan Leahy has left the session. Wow. Oh, Just going to retire the car. Yeah, I wonder, he immediately pitted after that contact. I wonder if he was scheduled to pit or if he somehow got like a meatball from just that, from hitting the wall that hard. Meatball. You can see that. Maybe he was pulling down pit road and they were just analyzing the damage to see how much was there and if it was even worth going out there to, to try and compete. Nah, yeah, it was pretty bad. As uh, the 09 of uh, Eric Smith is on new tires here going around. Uh, this is a nice battle with Bobby Zielinski and uh, Brad Wright here. That's for the uh, 10th place position. Can we just talk about, uh, and really it's been a theme this whole week, how clean this entire thing has been. Mm -hmm. we, we know a lot of people, they kind of have the thing, I race know where you're just going to log on and you're going to get wrecked. We have seen the drivers in the toughest car on one of the toughest tracks on the service one of the uh, definitely one of the hardest combinations that you can throw out there and these guys both in the twins and tonight have been extremely clean even if they're running that close together between right and Zelensky right there i mean it just goes to show that these guys uh, when you put them up to the task and you give them a challenge like you can see Zelensky and molus right here perfect example if they're running the modern cup card, they're not giving each other that much room off the corner. But you have to. You have to give that kind of extra level of respect with how much wiggle room there is with these cars. We saw Michael Guest the other night uh, slip up in one of the twins and get loose on the straightaway, and it caused an accident. That would never happen. With the caliber of guys that are in this field, that would never happen with the cars you drive now. But you have to kind of give that extra little bit of room because – uh, there is that little bit of margin of error with these cars that you just don't see these guys really uh, have to deal with much anymore. And this is a really interesting development right here, Blake. Um, we've got Colin Keister passing Jake Nichols, and these two are on separate tire strategies. Um, Jake, unless he decides, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna extend, I'm gonna abort the extra pit stop strategy and extend my run. He just got passed by somebody who's theoretically, if he, if they, you know, all things staying the same, if they pit with uh, the same number of laps on their tires, he just got passed by somebody who's making a one less pit stop. That's uh, Colin Keister, and uh, right now Colin uh, potentially in the driver's seat if he can make his way up to Tucker Minter there, and he's not too far behind, about uh, five seconds behind the race leader. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. And, 
you know, Keister, uh, really no shock to see him moving his way up. He picks off another two tenths of a second right there over uh, Tucker. And, you know, it was one thing I, I w I'm surprised about how many drivers we've seen who started up front uh, who have really run into issues. We saw Jarrett Liebert. He started seventh. He's obviously gone to the garage. He's out of the scene. Uh, Liam Brotherton is also out. Uh, he's going to finish in 42nd. But Nathan Lyon started fifth. He's a lap down. Kane Cook started third. He's a lap down. Michael Cozy started in sixth. He's running all the way back in 24th. So it's really been these guys that were around that 10th to 15th place range, not necessarily the guys that brought all that speed uh, in qualifying. They're flexing their muscles right now. We've seen a lot of that kind of midfield start to march their way forward and uh, uh, kind of take uh, stake their claim, I guess. Yeah. Looks like uh, second round of pit stops are starting here. Eddie Kerner just came off of pit road. Uh, so it's Connor Horn just signaled to everybody he's coming to, come to pit road here. So it was lap 40 was our first wave. This is, we're approaching lap 80, so we should see that first wave of guys make their second stop. And then lap 50 was our second wave. Is that right? So So close on lap 100. So you can see the marbles and all the rubber build up on the racetrack. Yeah. <laughs> looks beautiful. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have like a pretty decent stream of pit stops for the rest of the race if we don't get any cautions. Yeah, I think Chris Overland just called out that he's going to go to pit road. Andrew Petranik, he is going to make his way uh, onto the safety of pit road. And again, we, we went through an entire cycle no issues uh, as far as accidents are concerned. And obviously, these are admin con or oh. not admin controlled yellows, so anything. Uh, on the apron, perhaps a guy spinning through the grass, that could be enough to trigger a caution. We didn't get that once. We got a lot of mistakes, uh, but we didn't get anything that amounted to to bringing out a yellow flag. So hats off to these guys because, you know, I can tell you on 30, 40, 50 lap old tires, I don't care. It is hard to pit at this racetrack with this car. It certainly is. And uh, saw a few people. Chris Overland had a moment there on pit entry. He either yeah. had a moment Ooh, or he Jake did it Pickles. just right, though. Yeah, 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 that's Perfect. right. I can't tell you how many coke races I've watched where oh. guys look like they're spinning out. Oh, Tires drifting it oh, in. Boy. Oh, man. You know, you want to stay straight if possible, but you know what? If not, might as well just, you know, get a little sideways, slow you down a little faster. Yeah, pit road entrance is going to look like a drag strip just from guys locking up coming into it. <laughs> now, I don't know if anyone here has any Larry McNuggets, but what's the likelihood here that we're going to go green all the way to the end? Well, well, you know, Josh, I looked at the last 10 laps or the last 10 <laughs> races that we've run here in the car tomorrow at Atlanta, and the data is so old, it doesn't really apply to what we're doing here. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. Throw out the notebook. Thank you, Larry, Thank you, Matt, Larry. for the, uh, the cameo there. We appreciate you stopping. <laughs> no, it... Blake's really good at impressions. <laughs> I'm good at a couple, don't get me wrong. Uh, I, I don't do a lot, but the ones I do, I, I mean, that was probably a, a 6 out of 10, maybe. Oh, uh, I thought, oh, yeah, oh, I thought somebody was pitting. No, okay. Let's go back to the uh, other camera angle. Donovan Strauss in 10th in right now, doing a good job. One, the youngest driver in the field right now, in that 51 car, folks. I think he's, oh, I, I'm not sure exactly how old he is, but he's definitely... Uh, under the age of 18, I do believe. That is oh, correct. Not even close. I, I, re, anybody can remember that watched the, the Lenny Castle qualifying challenge that uh, Strauss was one of the competitors that, that nearly took that thing and won 10 grand, which I, I just can't imagine. I started sim racing on iRacing at his age, and I can't imagine going from just starting out to being somebody who could win $10,000 on a single lap. It's just mind-blowing to think about how good he is at his age. He'll be in the Pro Series um, and have a chance to go to the Coke Series at, I believe, 14 years old. I mean, that that's just unbelievable. Oh, 14. Whoa. Okay. I was way off. <laughs> um, another driver I want to highlight here is... Uh, Corey Carpenter won one of our twin races. He's uh, up nine positions from his starting spot, um, doing a good Ooh. job in that Pennzoil car. Um, the front stretch is getting busy right now. Two two sets of cars going three wide. I'm. I guess I'm missing all of that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Who's going so, three so wide? So they're on the back stretch now. But... Well, it's so much different. You think about three wide. 
a, a night ago, everybody was on the same strategy. Now you have guys who are, you know, a second faster than who they're passing. So we're, we're going to get some three wide here. We're probably going to see it a lot the rest of the night. But obviously the speed difference there uh, is going to make it where, you know, guys aren't leaning on each other for an entire lap three wide. I, I'll tell you, I was in the middle three wide for two uh, for about a lap and a half the other night. And I think I think I, uh, I think it took a year off me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Brian, so we're we're on lap 85 here. Mm -hmm. We saw a whole wave of cars come in on lap 50. Um, are I mean, are we are we close to seeing? I, I feel like we've only seen them trickle in. Um, this, yep. This kind of. And uh, and I think that that's a. Are these that, guys going longer? That might be a. Uh, the other guys realizing oh wow an extra pit stop is not going to work um and i think you're seeing a lot of guys as we we missed it but colin keister in the race lead um drove by uh well I th tucker minter i believe look let's see he pitted um but colin took the lead and I have to imagine that some of those guys are starting to, uh, you know, second guess their strategy of the the extra pit stop, just because I I think that the fall off is so severe the first few laps that and then it kind of stabilizes a little bit that, you know, Colin and Isaac are are the ones that might be fighting for the win here. I think so, and you know, it's really no shocker to see Isaac Gann up here contending uh, for this one. A guy a guy I've raced with for a long time. This guy was leading the Road to Pro series last year, 2019. He was leading the field, and he said, you know what, I, I just don't feel like doing this anymore, and just stopped with, like, four races left and still almost made the top 20. <laughs> I, I mean, he's obviously been in competitive. He, he missed the first two races uh, of Road to Pro this year, ran the third race, got 11 points, and still found his way into the top 20 pretty comfortably. Uh, by the by the end of the season so Isaac Gann somebody that I think uh, could kind of I wouldn't even call him an underdog but could kind of sneak up and would be one of those names that maybe not everybody out there recognizes but he's certainly capable of going out there and competing and um, I know personally he helped me a lot with trying to figure out qualifying certainly didn't work for me but uh, it did for him yeah and he's just uh, all over Colin Keister not uh not surprising these these two are up front these are two that I were, were look was looking for but Bobby Zelinsky somebody that uh, has did not uh, test as much as I would have liked to have seen he told me before the race uh, yeah I haven't really tested that much um, I hope you know did you change the setup at all oh okay you didn't change it all right well I, I didn't really do a lot of practice so we'll see what happens he's in third place right now. <laughs> <laughs> somehow the cream just always seems uh to rise to the top in these situations and uh for Zelensky, i think it's no different anybody that watched any of the road course races and the in oh. the coke series this year i think knows what they're talking about is that was a pretty sketchy moment right there that's a battle right now for second and oh yeah. brandon is going to make it nearly three wide off the corner Oh, yep, yeah, you can see McKissick there in that Jeff Gordon throwback. Um, so Bobby right now has two lap fresher tires than Isaac. So you can see the difference in tires there or, you know, just a different uh, as we, you know, we've got we've got so much going on, guys. I don't know if we we're not going to be able to cover half of it. <laughs> yeah, there's oh, crazy three wide passes and all sorts of stuff going around all around the track. It's crazy. Kane Cook was on the apron right there getting by guys, but he could do it on fresh tires. <laughs> Yeah. And Bobby's looking for the race lead right now, and I believe this is going to be the battle for the win if this can stay green, so, uh, you know, by some miraculous stretch of uh, odds. <laughs> you know, I, I want to say this real quick. We see another three wide here as Brandon Cattell uh, gets by Keister and Zelensky as they battle for the race lead. That uh, This is a driver's race, these long green flag runs. You get these green flag pit stops to matter long runs this is exactly what you want to see as a driver so if you're out there and you're kind of trying to figure out all these strategies everything with tires know that these drivers are having a blast and i know Zelensky having a blast more than anybody else he goes to the top of the board there he goes that's just incredible uh, you know seeing that go out there also 
hands, you know, we got to put our hands together for the fact that nobody out here has gotten or turned around or anything like that. We're almost halfway through this race and we're still green. And it tells you this, these are the best of the best. My number is lap 100 though. That's what I'm looking at because, you know, 50 was kind of late for a lot of guys to pit. Maybe lap 110. Maybe we can. Maybe lap 110 is a good one to mark. But like 50 to 55 was pretty late for a lot of guys. So for those that pitted on lap 45, 46, and they're still out on the racetrack, I mean they got, they're getting way up there with on their tire wear. I mean I, I could see that maybe this is the run that we see some blowouts. Somebody's yeah. gonna push the issue too far. Brian Doucette takes second place, and I tell you what, guys, he's on four lap older tires than Bobby and he is coming in a hurry running the same times as uh, the leader getting by those two cars there uh oh no hold on he's a tenth slower that last lap but I think that our our man Ryan Doucette who's shown so much speed in practice and he's up 20 positions from his starting spot I think um the amount of effort he's put in no surprise but one of the guys that might not be as as a pick to win this race is currently chasing down one of the greatest Bobby Zelensky right now. Well, and Ryan Doucette, uh, I was teammates with him for a little bit. He won the top split road to pro race at oh, Rockingham. Trouble! Oh, wait, Turn wait, one! Oh, oh, right no. in front of the leaders! Oh, oh it's Parker. Parker! Josh There's Parker Kligerman. Oh my. Oh no. Uh, let's see. And I think. Oh no, that's just going to be a single car incident, guys. As far as to bring back, like, yeah. Looked like he got on the wall or something uh, before yeah, that incident in happened. Here. So this was a call that I made three days ago. It didn't happen that we were going to see somebody on the entrance of one right near this black uh, kind of cup series marking that's at the top of turn one. This is going to be where something were hap would happen. Somebody would get loose and pound the wall, and that's exactly uh, what happened to Parker Kligerman is thinking E-Racer today, uh, Chevrolet, just gets loose in the tri-oval and is trying to track out of the corner and just makes a huge mistake and uh, oh, just Parker. pounds the right, side of the, I, guys, right I, side of the car. I don't know if that was a mistake. or He might have had something happen with his hardware or the screen. I know the, the most difficult part of this track is the front stretch. Um, there's no surprise, like everybody's talked about, the front stretch is the most treacherous part of the track, believe it or not. Uh, and it's, it's possible that he made that mistake, but uh, very easily, you know, his cat could have jumped on him. I don't know if he's a cat person, but <laughs> <that's>... <laughs> <laughs> nah, he likes he likes white claws. There we go. So we got a lot of people going down pit road right now, and, and right before this caution came out, we had several people come down pit road, including Briar Laprade, Colin Bowden, uh, Air Anthony Burrows, and that's gonna trap them a lap down. The free pass is going to go to Briar Laprade, so he's going to get that back, but everyone else is going to have to take a wave around. And this was that was only two laps before the caution flag did come out. And in my, in my chat, um, I got Will Norton in the chat. He's saying that something just gave out out of nowhere. He thinks that the tire blew. Uh, and Will Norton is a very wow. successful driver himself. He's, he knows what he's talking about. He's in sim looking at the replay right now. So, uh, yeah, what interesting, which, I mean, it, if it, the tire went down on Parker's car, he went much further, much further that first run than, than what he was on the second run so far. So just pushing the tires that much more can make that much of a difference. That's insane. Yeah, I, I suppose it can. Uh, it just, I mean, you know, and Parker's had some of the least amount of practice, obviously. Uh, he's been a busy guy the last few weeks, traveling all over the place. Uh, no surprise that, you know, it's it's easy to make a mistake. But I really think that, you know, maybe Bob Bryant baited him into that strategy, and it just wasn't right for him. He probably needed to pit a little bit sooner than Bob. Well, the one thing, I think it kind of talks to what uh, Landon was talking about earlier uh, with feeling like you're Superman when you're driving around people and you kind of lose sight of what you had to do to, to run that 
far on that first stint where you almost went about 60 laps. I think when you're just passing cars and you feel like Superman, you kind of lose sight of that. You don't think about saving those tires over a long, yeah. yeah. And we've got a hey, ton of wave rounds right now, guys. Hey guys, I got a I got a little report from uh, Parker, uh, Parker Clear with the crew chief. I uh, said that the car just got a little loose on the straightaway and you lost it, hit the wall. Uh, not okay. sure uh, what happened there, but no tires down for the 66 car today. Oh, and one of our biggest contenders for the race win, Bobby Zelinski, is going to be receiving a speeding penalty. Oh no. Oh, that changes a lot right there. Wow. Let's let's find Bobby here. Where are you, Bob? And we've nice. got some of our, our Larry McReynolds stats. What's the chances that we get some more cautions here? The guy's going to be more aggressive, trying to get to the front. What do you guys think? Uh, I think La Larry's in the uh, he's in the lounge right now. <laughs> what uh, what are we up to for track temp right now? Uh, it's actually down to 133 with this, yeah. uh, this caution flag out, so it's dropped three degrees. Yeah, look at all these wave arounds happen. Uh, now, the person who has the oldest tires on track right now is going to be Kane Cook and Tyler Gary, who both have tires that are just a little bit over 17 or 18 laps old apiece. Yeah, I'm seeing uh, Briar LaPrad. Going to take the wave around. Colin Bowden, Dylan Alt. I believe Briar got the free pass. Oh, okay. And then we got Burroughs, Cook, Hunt. Uh, looks like Hunt's trapped a lot down. So Hunt won't get the wave around. He, he might have elected to, you know, not take that wave around or wasn't eligible for it. We'll have to check on that. But yeah, a lot of a lot of wave rounds, and they'll have to restart How single many file. It looks like about ooh about ten or so, um, but we're gonna go green here. So I gotta switch back over the leaders, Landon. Um, <laughs> Ryan Doucette's gonna lead him to the green. I know that. <laughs> All right. Do we think that we've kind of we were settled out there? We had a long green flag run. You think the confidence these guys have now? They got fresh tires. They're gonna try to be making moves. We could see a couple more here. I think as we're three wide up front, Corey Carpenter slid through the middle as he tried to look to go three wide oh man i think the aggression level is going to pick up here we may be in for something here soon oh yeah look at him look yep. at him this is this looks way oh is we got a car in the wall off too we got we've got way more aggression than that first round and this is looking a lot similar to the twin races we're gonna see a gridlock back from like 15th on back oh overland's in the middle see, Bose is in the middle now you're looking at either a two-stop race at 30 lap intervals roughly or or you know you could split this last segment in half how many laps do we have to go let's About see 192 at the moment uh... oh eddie kerner eddie ball's gonna go three wide on the bottom this is for 20th overlands three wide in front of him oh man this is getting good have you ever this is well, amazing. I was in, I was in the middle, so it, <laughs> and it's they, not never, but it, it's rare. It was rare on that first run for these drivers. <laughs> and, and this is such a hard thing to manage. Yeah, do you go hard? Incredible. Do you go? Do you do you try to save your tires? I mean, do you try to m make your way forward here, Landon? I mean, I don't know. I, it's just a question of you know if we're going green all the way. I, I think if you're restarting. Um, Tenth on back, you're you're going pretty hard right now. You're just trying to get track position. Um, even if it goes 25, 30 laps and you get a caution, uh, it's a no-brainer to pit. Ooh, as... uh, if it if it goes 30 laps with no caution, you might just be thinking about a two-stop two-stop strategy. So, uh, look at this grid yeah, line. I, I oh, can definitely man. see driving hard. Oh, they almost oh the 67 and 24. That was Connor Horn and Jake Nichols made contact. They saved it. Now the 67 gonna go to the middle. He almost gets in the wheel. Cooley. We got oh Bob Bryant. Set the merchant's taking the race lead. I hate to go away from it, but set the merchant. My pick to win the race. Just took the race lead. I'm really excited, guys. Oh, Andrew <laughs> Petrinic is always oh, going to shove Donnie through the middle. I'm sorry to keep going back here, but... No, no, we'll, we'll go back there. We'll go back there. Well, we're, we're right now we're on uh, Mercurio. We can go back a little further. 
Oh man, I got, these guys are got, not saving as much. And they might, you know, Landon, as you said, you, they might be planning maybe an extra pit stop. It's just their strategy might be all over the board for this one. Well, and maybe it's just that now that we've finally seen a caution, that idea of going green to the end has gone out the window, and everybody is just betting that there's another caution one way mm -hmm. or another. And that's that's your shot at winning. If you want to win this race, you have to push. You can't sit back and ride, I don't think, right now. Yeah, I mean, you re if you restarted 15th on this last restart, you, you're not going to win this race on a, by going green to the end. No. No, you and move it, up in advance and then get a lucky caution and come get tires and try it again. Yeah, yeah. You gotta, and you they gotta have try to make ground. And they have so many sets of tires on pit road, you have to think any caution that would come out now, you'd be hard pressed to not see the entire field. Oh, like if we had a caution right now, I think everybody would come down. Oh, yeah. well, especially because you got the wave round cars too. Oh, it's the three wide Gill and, uh, and Carpenter, Bryant. Three Ooh, wide, they're tight. Three. They're tight. Oh, yeah, you gotta oh, pinch them down. That's part of the game. You gotta pinch them. There's not a lot of love given. Oh, Eddie Ball's gonna have to shut the door on. I believe that. Yeah, that was Connor Horn again. Oh, they are oh. still three wide. Reynolds is loose. Wow, yeah, that's a stack up right there. That's gonna force someone in the back there to go three wide on the outside. Oh, we got contact back here. Somebody got bumped out of line. That's I think that was Connor Horn. Up. Yep, Connor Horn. Isaac Gann is in second place now, guys, but uh, we'll stay with this amazing battle for 14th. It looks like Reynolds going to be on the outside. Bob Bryant's going to take over three positions from 12th to 15th in a single lap is Bob Bryant. Reynolds going to have to shut the door on Gilliland. Kerner's looking to make a move on the back of Gilliland. He almost gets into the back. Oh, man, they are sliding. Yeah, they are. Brian, can you get us a good, a, a quick look at what the pace looks like now compared to when the race started? Just to yeah, get an let, idea how let, far they run. Let, let's try to get an idea here. Man, I know I'll, by the eye test they're fast. I'll get back <laughs> to you. I'll get back to you in about forty seconds. Bobby Zelensky up to twenty fourth after getting that EOL. Right now, Mitchell Hunt would be the lucky dog. We got a caution. He's ahead of Parker Kligerman right now. I'm going to go back to Petranic really quick to check his lap times. So right now, yes, the pace has picked up significantly. Uh, right now, Seth the Merchant is lapping faster than Petranic was that first run. So he's pushing it as hard as, I think, as hard as he can right now. Now, track temperature 134 compared to, I think we started about Oh, we got a wreck in the back. Oh. We got a wreck and a yellow flag. A yellow flag is out. That was towards about 35th That's or so. Or... It's Tiraz. He doesn't have too much damage, guys. I think he'll be able to continue without too much, too many problems. But like you said, Landon, the, the, you got to push hard and hope for a caution. This is the caution. Yeah, anybody that's made progress on that restart... Uh, is benefiting now. They come in and get some fresh tires and, and re-rack it, start it again. You know, hopefully you moved up from 16th to 12th or something like that and uh, chomp at it again. I'm looking at this replay right now and Santiago Terez kind of gets into the back of McKissick and that's just going to cause a stack up from behind and he's going to get punted out of the way by Andrew Farias. Uh, yeah. How do I pronounce that right? Free nice, thank you. Freena has just got in the back and, you know, Santi probably wasn't, you know, it's it's so easy to, you know, misjudge where your nose is. And and plus, you, you got guys saving tires. You, you got guys that are doing the opposite probably back here. OK, let these guys run ahead. I'll pass them on the long run. And probably Santi just wasn't expecting that big of a checkup and just got in the back. But uh, I think we'll see some pit stops now, guys. Yeah, it looks like everybody on the lead laps coming in. That is the case. Mitchell Hunt, uh, who, of course, he'll be able to pit later. He's the lucky dog right now. Parker Kligerman and Tyler Gary, uh, they'll they'll be the two cars that take the wave around, so they'll eventually get back on the lead lap. I don't think in our wildest dreams we'd see anybody take two, but did McKissick even come down pit road? No, he missed his pit stall. That's a mistake. And you can't oh, be making this late Keister, in the race. Keister wins the race off pit road. Uh... Set the merchant gonna lose the lead. I think he's gonna go back to third. 
Bobby Zielinski made up a lot of track position there after that speeding penalty. Yeah, he got up to 23rd before that caution came out, so yeah, he, he's he did digging. a nice job. Yeah. All right. God, remember when we were talking about long runs and saving? Yeah. Wasn't that a fun time? <laughs> Let's just throw that notebook out the window. I think we've come to Caution City now. Uh, yeah. uh, keep I, in mind, these guys get 12 sets of tires when this race started on top of the set that they started with. So to how many of, they're going to have about 9 or 10 nine or sets 10? left. They're going to have plenty of tires. And right, so just... McKissick's going to come down pit road here, so he missed his stall. He's going to give himself a, a de facto speeding penalty uh, almost at this point uh, to oh. come back yeah. down. And, you know, this is one thing. You, you don't have a lot of races where you have 43 cars. I know a lot of these guys do a lot of official racing here on iRacing, usually 20 to 30 people. Um, so you're not always used to having every single pit stall uh, with the pit box and if you don't have a spotter counting you in it, it can kind of be difficult and you have to remember where you qualify because here in iRacing it's obviously one, pit stall 1 through 43 is based off of uh, just where you qualify so you have to remember that and you know that's a mistake a lot of people I know made in the 125s too and just an update uh, Tyler uh, Gary and Parker Kligerman actually came down pit road as well so they're still going to be a lap down but just a little update there on the the battle for uh, that lucky dog, Tyler Gary, did beat Parker Kligerman out. And who was our free pass that time by? Mitchell Will Hunt. Mitchell Hunt, and that that was a strong car. I think he just, uh, I don't know what happened with that unscheduled pit stop. I think he came down a little bit early and it bit him. But Mitchell Hunt has shown incredible speed, about the same speed that uh, Seth the Merchant has shown on the long run. So I expect him to move forward. You know, shout out to the uh, the Hilton uh, Wi-Fi because it is holding up really strong right now. So, <laughs> shout out to those guys. You guys, don't know Blake is uh, calling this race from his hotel room, and not exactly at the rig. Uh, we we brought up the old laptop. We're getting a nice solid uh, forty-five frames a second right now, spectating this race. Uh, Tell you what, it, it makes you appreciate that old rig you got back home. Yeah, and Johnny Hockey in my chat says Blake should have taken his whole PC and connected it to the hotel TV for the monitor. <laughs> before we uh, before we go green, in chat, why don't you guys drop, who are you rooting for on this race? Yeah, and who do you think's going to win, too? Yes. Uh, I, I am curious. Uh, I have no idea who's going to win. This is, just, this is so competitive. Um, we have... Uh, Brandon Brown on Twitter says, "Let's go, Jimmy Mullis Racing." So, okay, Jimmy. Yeah, I would bring my computer down here if I didn't have to drive on I-85 uh, in South Carolina. Let's. Uh, uh, anybody uh, who's driven it knows what I'm talking give about. A so I don't trust driving with that piece of equipment in my car. Give a shout out to this paint scheme real quick, Jimmy Mullis. What a beautiful paint scheme that is. That's probably my fa favorite paint scheme in the entire field. That Coca-Cola machine. To so come to the restart. Case truck is in. A little bit of a check up there on that inside line. Seems second place of uh, Seth the Merchant didn't get that launch he wanted. Or third place of Seth the Merchant. Man, look all the way throughout the field. They are side by side. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got the 77 making a look on Brian Mercurio. That's Bob Bryant. He's uh, probably happy to be on the lead lap after that wacko strategy he tried to pull. Uh, they're still working too. Donovan Strauss able Ooh. to make the middle of three wide work back here for about 19th. Oh, they're going three around Connor yep. Horn. Blake That's... Reynolds is in the middle. Yep, and Jake Nichols seems like every time we go back to him, he's three wide. No surprise mm -hmm. here. And that dodge. That... That's a beautiful paint scheme, by the way. I like that. Far, no far. Oh, he's still gonna Unless be stuck it's on my that. car because it's a Chevrolet. <laughs> Chris Overland on the race lead. Sorry, I stumbled on my words there, we, but Chris Overland. We need to, we need to talk about that because isn't isn't he uh, making donations for every lap he leads? He certainly is. Blake, you want to handle that? Yeah, it was agreed upon that uh, Chris Overland and Parker Kligerman were going to team up for every lap that they led. Uh, they would be donating to the 
uh, assist program, applied suicide intervention and skills training uh, program that uh, I know my twin is very happy to have that um, on the thinking eraser today, Chevrolet. Um, but obviously an important program to him that uh, he utilizes in the United States Navy uh, to obviously uh, raise, raise awareness and to, uh, to help people coping through a difficult time, which um, I know, especially for a lot of veterans right now, I know, I know my brother and I were talking recently um, about a lot of people who, you know, because of the pandemic and COVID, you know, they went through basic training and right now they're in Japan and they haven't, you know, they haven't seen their families since they got sent off to basic, which is already a, a pretty difficult time for a lot of those guys. So, um, you know, that's a pretty important program. I know he's proud of the work he does and uh, proud to have it on the car. And uh, cool that Overland and uh, Parker came together to do that. And I mean, he's going to raise a lot of money because he's got about a four tenth of a second lead right now. Yeah, and Ray Alfala is uh, pulled into the second place position. I think Ray's got plenty of speed for the short run. Not sure about that long run. I think he he's still trying to feel this thing out. I don't think he had much practice, but uh, Chris Overland's the race lead. I mean. Guys, Chris, uh, I just circled it, but uh, Chris is running some really, really fast laps right now. Yeah, he's got about a six car length lead over Ray right now, and I'm not sure if it's gaining right now, but he was about a tenth of a second uh, faster that last lap. Another small flex. Uh, Overland did finish uh, that race in my rearview mirror just behind me, so... Uh... <laughs> Again, just uh, just throwing that out there. Well, oh. Blake, if you wouldn't have uh, had to go down to where you're at right now, you could be out there leading this race. Uh, well, probably not. <laughs> it's a lot easier to be up here in the booth and uh, be a has-been and talk about it than to Ooh, actually be out three there wide. doing it. They are, yeah, three wide back in the pack. I think we got somebody in the wall right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, it's just barely off of it if he wasn't Adam Gilliland. Oh, Danny Hansen's going to shove it up the middle beneath Tucker Mentor. He's going to be forced three. And, oh, are That's he close. And That's close. Make... Oh, this, this, that is, close. this is a caution that Chris Overland would probably be okay with right now <laughs> as he's really going fast out front. Um, but they managed to sort it out. Last lap for uh, Chris Overland. Three one hundredths of a second faster than Ray. Man, I wish I was out there. What do you think? Blake, Landon, Josh, AJ, <laughs> I want to be in this race so bad. Oh, man, I can't imagine how wore out these guys are, but it has to be so much fun <laughs> at the same time. I mean, I, I didn't, I don't have my Coleman gallon of water uh, next to my sim rig, so I, I'd probably have some trouble getting through it, because I got to tell you what, I was drenched the other night, and I mean, that was only 80-something laps. I mean, <laughs> this is 200. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I think I know my place. I'm going to stay right here in the broadcast booth. I'll let everybody else out there do the <laughs> show because I'll be the one 43rd spinning out. <laughs> uh, man, Bobby Zielinski back here trying to fight back from that speeding penalty. We saw him, man. I think Bobby was one of the, the favorites for this race. Just got, got that speeding penalty, and now he's a man on a mission right now. He's back up to 21st. I think he's been saving his stuff a little bit, anticipating maybe a little bit longer run. But then again, maybe this is just gridlocked in front of him and he has nowhere to go. You know, I think this is around the point in the race, Brian, where you see there's a blinker there right near Zelensky that a lot of these guys, that this is a private event. They're not racing for points. This is kind of a, you know, try to go out and win. And that's the most important thing. Uh, if you're back here where Zelensky is, you see all those cars in front of you and you can be one of the fastest cars on the racetrack, but you're just so mired in traffic. Mm -hmm. You almost have to think here, do you just kind of come down pit road and short pit just to try to do something oh. different? Hope that something works because the odds that you're going to get through all this traffic and still have a chance to win this thing is, is slim to none. So when are you these guys back here, not just Selinski, but anybody back here? Uh, you see Carpenter right there. You see Petranic right there. Do you start to kind of just think, what what's the opposite of what my competition's doing to just give myself a chance because if it's win or go home that's really all that matters yeah i don't have an answer <laughs> uh it's just it's really hard to play the strategy with this race uh obviously if everybody could just run as hard as they possibly could maybe andrew petranic would be still up there in the race lead 
but uh, there's so much tire saving involved that uh, you just you, and and the cautions kind of throw things for a loop that we just we just really don't know. As we see, Eric Smith really working that top side and that uh, blue. It's like that uh, Pepsi machine there, flash by the screen. Well, Brian, tell me. I mean, this this might be the craziest idea, but what's it look like if if we get a ten lap run and everybody comes in and you just come in and put rights on? Ooh. Oh, I, I don't know if we've seen anybody do rights at all the whole week. Oh, Landon's uh, Landon's thinking outside the box, which I'm very, I, I'm a big but fan of. Yeah, thinking outside of the box is what wins you races. Exactly. If you do you can't... the same strategy of everyone else, you're not going to differentiate yourself. I, I would... Oh, is we got Eddie Kerner. Oh, boy. Eddie Kerner making a big... Oh, big slide off of two. Um, Eddie Ball. Eddie Ball in the chat. Any any Eddie Ball fans in the chat? <laughs> but no, I think if you change that number from 10 to 5, I think you got yourself a deal. You got you to gotta make up yeah. track position somehow. Well, and you got to think if it's a net gain, if you're back here in 35th, you take two tires and it gets you up to ninth. Even if you fall back 10 spots, you're still you're still moving up. So where's kind of that cut line of guys who are, you know, is it is someone in 10th going to try to win the race on a two tire call if it's, you know, two or three laps to go? That's where uh, it gets interesting battle for second here. Here comes the four time champ. Uh, Ray Alfalady inside. Yeah, it looks like actually Colin's going to take that spot away on the outside. Uh, Ray oh, wow. was occupying the second place position, and now he's going to. Oh, is going to go three? Yeah, I oh. think I think Ray was saying, okay, I'll go hard. There's probably going to be another yellow, and there wasn't. So now I think, you know, Chris Overland just lapped a 3297. Keister was passing. Uh, so we'll go with Isaac's lap. Isaac just did a 32. 92 so a little bit slower but uh oh man chris is just sliding that right rear a little too much i think guys to stay in that race lead i but think so too and good donations about... being made here <laughs> yeah well i also have to think like draft is still a slight advantage yeah so being that car in second or third is not necessarily a bad thing if you can stay within a second. And it looks like Overland, maybe he's slowing down, or obviously Keister's catching him at some point. I think I just heard a call over the radio. Somebody's going to come over pit road. It sounded That'd like be, Kentucky boys. Yeah. Maybe Brandon Cattell? Brandon oh. Cattell is coming down pit road this time by. Well, he would know a thing about winning e-racer events, so uh, we'll he's see gonna... if it works out for him. Ooh, That's he... only 20 laps, He though. made it. He made it. He made it. <laughs> He's short pitting for sure here. This is a big short pit as we have a pass for the lead right now. Yeah, you see Keister is going to go to the inside. Oh, it's Colin tight. It's Bowden tight. Is going to go pit now. I see a little damage on the right rear of Chris's car. I'm not sure when that happened, but uh, I do see a little bit of damage there. There's a big stack of... Oh, that's going to be... A... Oh, they save it. I don't know. Wow. How. Where is it? It was towards the back of the pack. I think around 30th, there was a car, two cars right coming down to through four. Oh, man. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Garrick. I missed it. I couldn't get it. Oh, that was with Overland and Keister sliding around, battling yeah, Garrick. each other. Yeah, got... Contact. Yep, now they're three wide back there. That same little group that got checked up. Oh, yeah. Big battle back here. And everybody's stepping on each other's toes. There's guys on different, different strategies, different tire-saving strategies, different... Um, different everything, just a lot of different driving characteristics that are just different that, that bleed through with this high horsepower package. Oh yeah, it looks like Nathan Lyon has a little bit of right front damage. That's not good. No. He was probably involved in that, uh, the little stack up there coming to pit road and yeah. it was, I say little, but that's about as close as you can get to wrecking without wrecking. Oh, and the, the target car there, who's that? He's got a lot of front end damage. Got another car coming down pit road right here. Two cars coming down pit road. Yeah, you'll see this often in real life where guys come down pit road and because they don't want to lose the time, they start to do it. But guys, this is going to be a 60 lap run. If you're coming down here, I'm assuming you're going to go to the end. You're you're putting in the bank oh, that, hey, we're, we're going to go oh. entirely to the end. That's that's oh, see that man. towards the back of the pack, getting three wide and getting real dicey back here with those those faster cars on fresher tires are just working their way on the outside just passing by everybody like they're stopped 
Um, they're they're on the carpool lane trying to get to work as fast as possible with those fresh tires. Is that another beer I heard crack up in there, Corey? <laughs> no, no. Or Brian. No, Corey. no, 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 uh, no beer. But uh, that, I'm, uh, I'm that just, tar I'm I'm almost out of beer. I need another one. That uh, that target car with the damage is Dylan Alt. And he is uh, definitely off the pace now after getting that damage. Yeah, and you know we we didn't document this really, but Jimmy Mullis up to P P three, really really solid, smooth, steady driver. Um, one of my top six picks, I think I had for for this race. Um, he's just he's just so smooth, guys. He's very smooth operator. Doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Doesn't you know doesn't talk a whole lot. But you know keeps to himself. You know just methodical one of the most methodical drivers i think on the entire service but guys I, I think i have something to report the parker Kligerman has come down pit road and i don't see uh any work being done on that race car as he's going to lose about two or three laps here i think uh old parker may have uh it may have retired that race car yes jimmy mullis sorry to switch topics but jimmy mullis passes for second place here around isaac gann Isaac, uh, Colin, Jimmy, three guys that I really expected to be up front. Chris Overland really impressed me right now, guys, that he's able to hang as close as he is, um, even with, you know, running as hard as he did at the start of the run. No, I, I think you're right. Uh, you've seen a lot of people who get out front, and once they get past, they just drop like a rock, and Overland's done enough uh, to just hang on to these guys, but... There's so many cars flying through the field. I, I just don't see how we're not going to get a caution here. We've seen, I think it's Colin Bowden right there. You see coming off a of turn two and that Jeff Gordon machine, he's going to go to the inside. He's obviously on fresh tires, and he is just wheeling it through this field with 20, 30 cars stacked up like this soon after a restart. Oh, boy, big slide there. Oh, man. Man, that, that, that is. is oh. That's just getting intense right now and stack up through that whole pack right now. Oh, you see Connor Horn almost in the two set. How is that not a crash? Not sure. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. Andrew uh, Tranik is going to be working on the outside here now with this group that's just been bouncing off each other like pinballs. Oh, man, these guys are running just nose to tail right behind Connor Horn right here. Petranic making making some headway here. Look how fast those new tires are, and this is the strategy. Um, will a 60 lap run to the end be a stop middle of the run, Landon? I I have no idea. I didn't I didn't make it 60 laps on on gas. But I can mm -hmm. certainly see you having the ability to save two laps rather easily. I don't know. I mean, the, you know, we saw Bob Bryant was was losing the lead. I can't remember if he lose the lead um, at the end of that 60 lap run. He did, yeah. So I mean, yeah. I, well, know, going the full distance may not be the winning strategy. Oh man, it's gonna be. It's going to be tough because yeah. Petranik's just getting, I think he's just getting held up. You know, this is where he needs to make up his ground, too. Early in the run, you you have you have the ability to set some really fast lap times. And if he's fighting traffic at all, it could cost him an opportunity to get back to the race lead. Or, and, uh, you know, wherever he was running. We got a, a new member of the booth here, uh, Parker Kligerman, who was just out on track has uh, retired the car and decided it's going to be much more fun to finish this race out in the booth. Hi, guys. Yep. Hey, Parker, you... You, um, you still manage to have perfect hair, too. You, you, well, you should have showered because you're sweaty and gross. <laughs> um, it looked like it was a lot of work out there. It was. It was uh, a tremendous amount of work. Um, felt like we had the uh, Think and E-Racer assist uh, Chevy, you know, coming through the field nicely. Bob, Brian, and I were on that alternate strategy. It was going to work out. And then I uh, I missed my stall there because it was the first one. Um, and then it was a downhill slide from there. So, 
Well, uh, oh. well, that was tough. Tough pass out there, guys. Tough. It certainly is. And, uh, Parker, we we don't uh, we don't envy the situation you were in. Limited practice, limited uh, you know time on track compared to these guys have been testing for this race. Um, I know a few of these guys who actually helped me come up with the idea, make it what it is right now. Um, they've been testing for over a month for this race. Uh, and this means a lot to them, not just because of the money, but because of the amount of uh, the, the difficulty level. It's it's huge bragging rights if you can walk away with the win here. I hear you, man. It, it is really tough. Uh, my left arm hurts. My right shoulder is on fire. Um, so I'm sweaty, of course, <laughs> and as Landon pointed out. And it's just, it's really, really hard. I don't, I think, you know, I was probably like a 28th place car, to be honest. I was not anywhere uh, near being top 25 or top 20 or even, you know, being sort of the front guy. So I needed some crazy strategy to work out. Um, but unfortunately, we damaged the uh, the car there and couldn't continue. I was, I was too slow. Well, me, Parker, I, I'll tell you, and Blake, you're going to love to hear this, having assist on board. Blake, I, I don't know what your number um, is at yet that you've raised, but I just got a message from Aaron Studwell at race weather on Twitter. He wants to match um, your combined donation. So. Uh, All right, I'll match it as well, why not? That's awesome. Well, we just tripled it right there then. There you go. Hey, and for wrecking the car, I'll match it as well. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, you guys are well, awesome. That's, well, speaking of uh, matching, Chris is uh, the one going out there trying to put some laps lead on the board to go ahead and raise money for assist and he just went down pit road this time or last time by it so he's flying through the field i i would i would quadruple it but uh i put the 500 bucks up to win so i'm all out of money i'm gonna <laughs> have to go. eat ramen all week but uh, this is well worth it guys <laughs> love, love it all right, well that's awesome. Uh, thank you for uh, for matching that. Everybody who's doing that, that's awesome. I'm sure uh, I'm about to get some text from my brother in Japan who who's tuned in as he does for all these big events, and uh, I'm sure he's going to be thrilled. Yep, and of course you can count me in. That's such a good looking race car, so uh, we appreciate you running it. Thanks, Parker, and and thanks. Aaron for getting the uh, hype train started here. On the here we go, guys. Guys, battle for the race lead. Seth the Merchant. And th this, oh, this... oh, we got a wreck in the back. We got a wreck in the back. Oh, That's gonna bring the caution out. Oh, and we sorry. have a caution. Eric Smith, man, I was about to give the most amazing pass on the outside. The right. Oh, oh, I have to remember the name of that award. Uh, we have a pass on the outside award, but Seth the Merchant was so close to getting that race lead, guys. Oh, and Chris Overland was just about to unlap himself too. Just, uh, just so you guys know, that was uh, Ryan Doucette that was involved in, in that, uh, in that one. Yeah, we'll go back and look at it. He got, he got oh, punted man. by Briar Laprade. Going into, going into turn three, almost collected the 48 car as well, but he managed to keep it underneath him. Yeah, I'll take a look at it here, and oh, that, that's before corner entry right there is. Uh, he and LaPrade got and see this is what makes this so difficult. LaPrade sees that he has a car, a faster car, approaching him on the inside. That's Brad Wright, uh, who has fresher tires or didn't have actually yeah, had fresher tires than them. So LaPrade's trying to give him room and go under Doucette at the same time. Doucette gets a little bit loose and uh, so does Breyer kind of checking him up and again the, the hardest parts of this racetrack seem to be middle of the back straightaway and entering turn one, and that's where we've seen both both caution flags come out. And we've got a heck of a race off pit road. Looks like Colin Keister's gonna edge out, uh, set the merchant there. But uh, I was gonna say, guys, I think set the merchant was 50 bucks away, or a couple of seconds away from 50 bucks because that was gonna be the most amazing pass on the outside all night. And uh, we've got Andy Hunter who, who donated last minute to the best pass on the outside award and i think that was i got really excited for that but let's go back and we'll, we'll take a look at the replay now i i was trying to remember the name of the the award uh 
I was uh, gonna ask, who was the top car here? Because I was doing a lot of fighting in the back. Never could really. Oh, see there, who was it's up. been an ebb and flow. There, I don't think anybody's established themselves really as the uh, the top dog here. Like I think you got about ten that you could that are probably up around the front right now that you could really count as contenders. But it's so hard to tell with all the different strategies we've had all day. So here's the interesting part. So what we were, what I was seeing out there was, you know, first 20 laps, kind of everyone was the same, right? In this mm -hmm. group, you know, when we were in the 125s, it was like 15 laps you started to see comers and goers. These guys, though, I'm just thinking top of the game, it's like 30 laps before we start oh. comers and goers. So, Sorry, we're looking at the replay. A... Uh, yeah, Ryan Doucette just uh, got turned around. Oh, Eric Smith is... He's done. He's got a lot of damage there. Uh, not may not be out of the race, but yeah, those those guys are really having issues. This is the wreck I needed. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Go ahead and get. <laughs> you live. were uh, you were the lucky dog in position for the lucky dog when you uh, came down pit road. If we got a. Uh... Sorry, we got a number of wave rounds. It looks like. Got about five cars going to be waving around here. Yeah. Uh, Donovan Strauss, Brad Wright, Corey Carpenter, Jake Nichols, Santiago Tierra is going to wave around here. And I'm I'm going to try to hit the restroom really quick, guys. I'll uh, keep it on the race leader here. <laughs> um, but yeah. Oh, producer's out. Producer commentator. Make it quick. We're coming to one to go. Yeah, we're coming. I'm coming back. All righty. Like classic hot. Parker Kligerman uh, pit stop. <laughs> that's right oh my gosh i don't know this would be this would be a you could probably so most of these especially these front cars you can go way harder knowing that you just have about 40 laps you can oh, definitely yeah. so it's yeah this is gonna be interesting because everyone's been doing the same amount of saving knowing that they have to go so far and now you can just go. well now parker i'll pose the question to you we may obviously the aggression level is going to kick up everybody knows that you don't have to think long run per se what do you think is the threshold here if we get a three or four lap run do you think you'll see a lot of guys down pit road yeah you're gonna need these tires you're gonna need it okay guys do, i am back fall off. yeah with how many All sets right. these guys have left i feel like they're gonna come Probably every caution. I think you'll see it early, but with 20 to go, it, it, it becomes, do you want to lose all that track position? And there could be some second guessing there. Pace truck's going to pull in here. You can also yeah. have a ton of contact in these cars that you can't really get away with in most cars. So Reflex in the air. Colin Keister's out in front. It looks like Seth the Merchant ain't going to have the start he's wanting. He's going to be falling back to third right now on the outside of uh, second place driver right now, Jimmy Mollis. Side by side, pretty much all the way through the field beyond that. Oh, running up by the wall there for third, side by side. Jimmy Mullis to the inside, DeMerchant to the outside. Again, the best of the best, DeMerchant rolling through the middle, and that middle line, it's a great passing groove. DeMerchant going to look high for a lead. Seth DeMerchant's going to take back second place here and start to work on Colin Keister in front of him. Just barely a quarter of a car length ahead. Uh, DeMerchant was barely able to get down there in front of Jimmy. You see Keister sliding off the corner. Danny Hanson, where has he come from? We've seen him all week. He's had a ton of short run speed. Here's the view from uh, from DeMerchant's, uh, DeMerchant's seat. Golly. You can see, you can just see from the wheel input how hard they're driving. You, it's all about being smooth. But you can see right there, it, it, they are wheeling the heck out of it right now. But there's still enough laps to go that I mean, you can you can take off and burn your tires up a little bit. That's true. Um, but I mean, I, if you're if you restarted fifth, sixth right now, I think that you're going as hard as you can try to get in the lead. Oh wow! Look at this. Oh, oh, here you go. Got you're to the, the right rear. This he might be the 50 bucks right here, guys. Still right there. He's at his number. He's not cleared him quite yet. Oh, oh man. Where's the side draft when you need it? Right. <laughs> oh, Brian there it is, right there. Down the right oh, man, even on the back. This is going to be a drag race down the back stretch. <laughs> going to be one of them classic Atlanta passes. 
and I think he's able to do it. He's gonna yeah, pinch Keister off there. Oh, masterful job there by Demerchant. What a move. What a move, guy. <laughs> I think Jimmy Mullis saw what just happened there, and he's gonna try and replicate it to try and get second. Yeah, I think he's, which again, you got to think to Merchant and Mullis by doing this, they're, they're burning off those tires. So that's not, that's not going to be good for that, uh, for the long run pace. If we do get a long run, but obviously they're winning the track position battle. Now Mullis going to look to the inside for the lead. And these guys are lapping a little bit fast, but one guy that I've seen who can potentially run really hard out front and keep the lead is Seth the Merchant. Haven't seen enough data from from Jimmy Mullis to know whether or not he can contend for this, but looking good right now. <laughs> well, I think the one the one key that you look at is who's running the middle right now. Isaac Gann was in third. He's on his own, and look, he's running the middle. I remember talking to Isaac earlier today. He said you can't run the middle until midway through the run, but it's faster. So obviously the tire saving is out the door. You can see this top three. They're showing that quite easily as they're pulling away. Now, Gan, get a look to the middle for a second. <laughs> oh, man. This is wild, guys. Somebody tell them they still got about 38 more laps to go. This ain't lap 194. You still got more to go. Yeah, I think these guys can handle it, though. I think they can, they can potentially manage the tires at the end of this run. These guys, these three are... are are three of about six drivers that I think I've seen be able to hold on to this thing when the tires wear out. And wow, look at Gann easily around Jimmy Mullis. So now Gann's going to look for the lead for a moment. Oh, he's going to get a great drive off the two to the inside. Yeah, these two have elevated themselves. Isaac Gann, Seth the Merchant, they have been so passionate. As Gann sends it in the three, these guys have been so passionate about this race. The, oh, these... we got trouble in the back, guys. Oh, Eric Smith is around. Oh, there's the and caution. There's a... Caution flag is just out, and I it looks think... like the Merchant's gonna hold oh, it. Man. Yeah, it's timing and score. He's gonna give that one to uh, the Merchant, but it was a battle at the front. Let's go back and take a look right now, guys. Contact between Eric Smith and Donovan Strauss going into three. Oh yeah, it looks like. Donnie maybe got in there a little hot. Maybe Eric checked up a little too soon. I don't. I I couldn't couldn't possibly tell you, but uh, we're gonna have caution. Well, and the the interesting is, so obviously Smith gets sideways. He pretty much has it saved. He's on the apron. He has the wheel straight, and then he kind of gasses it up mm -hmm. and and kind kind of uh, turns it around. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. You, you gotta get tires here. Everybody's gonna be pitting. I hope. Oh, gotta watch out for that yellow line and that orange cone. Parker knows that. Here, so Brian, is this your chance to take two? <sighs> I think it was too long on the tires. I don't know, Landon. I just don't know. I mean, there's still 30 laps to go. Yeah, I don't think you can do two. Yet. It's a long ways. No, no uh, way. 30 no laps. Way. 30 laps I mean, feels like 50 laps. A quick caution, or, or maybe five laps and a caution. You know. Yeah. 30 laps I got here. Out uh... to Merchant, a great exit off. Oh, but here comes Gan. We'll see who has it at the line. Merchant. Yeah, it looks like Gan, he had that advantage of that second pit stall, but just wasn't able to get it. Tyler Gary, it's got to be just ecstatic right now. He's been working all race to just try and get that lap back, and he just got the, the free pass that time. Another thing, guys, like if you're running 35th there, if you take two, I think you're going to restart around like 16th. So I don't know, you know, Joe um, was talking about in, in my chat about, you know, 35th, why not? Um, I think if you stay out, you're a sitting duck. That would get you the lead. But I think if you take two, it's not going to get you the lead necessarily. Well, and this is what I was talking about. I guess I should have phrased that question earlier uh, to Parker a little bit differently when you uh, bring up tires and if we get these short runs, but... You know, if there's seven or eight laps to go, you have three or four lap old tires, and there's a, you know, you're going to restart with like seven to go. That That's where it gets really, really interesting because oh, if you're 15th on back, why, why wouldn't you pit? You have nothing to lose. And if you're up front, you can't give up that track position. So that's where it could get really, really interesting. Which, by the way, Brian, remind us of how many uh, green white checkered attempts we have. Three green white checkers attempts. 
Oh Sorry. boy. Red popcorn in my mouth. <laughs> hey boys, I'm gonna go watch the uh, the rest of this broadcast uh, off here. I'm gonna uh, go shower, and uh, I gotta be at 5 a.m. tomorrow. So. Oh boy! All right. Oh my goodness. Together, man. This was fun. Thank thanks, you. Parker. Thanks for all coming. right. Thanks for wheeling that car Thank around. Yeah. Thanks for the ride. Thanks for the opportunity, guys. I look forward to the finish. This is gonna be wild. Oh Stay yeah. Bed. Yeah. Don't wanna miss this one. So here we are, we're coming to uh, two to go, or we're at two to go right now, coming to one to go this time by. It's gonna be a wild restart. Oh yeah. It's just, it's great to see these guys kind of being put in a position that they haven't throughout this, throughout this entire event is running side by side. And you know, right now, you know, most of these guys are probably running 75, 80% trying to save tires. These guys are going to go 100% from here to the end because they're worried about wrecking for 15th, wrecking up front. Um, and obviously, that battle between Demerchant and Gan that was side by side right there when the caution came out, that, I mean, that could determine this race, having control of this restart right here. So it's just, uh, I, I think we're, we're not holding anything back anymore. It is full steam here to the end. Who is that talking over the the? <laughs> I think somebody's imitating a, a Boston accent right now. That's uh, Chris Henyon. You know, I gotta say, it's a really good accent. <laughs> if that's not his real voice. <laughs> it's uh, looks like it's Real Palace spotter tonight. Oh yeah, Chris Henyon's got man. He's he's just hilarious. He was really right. one of the drivers that almost made the show, just uh, got hit under caution in a twin 125. Very easily could have made the show. But uh, shout out to Chris Henyon, by the way. Just really solid member of the community. Been around forever. As we go green. Ready to go green? I'm ready to go green. All right, let's see here. This is really interesting. Demerchant gets a great launch. A lot of these guys. Four wide down the front. Oh, man. Yep, it's go time now. Yeah, no holding back. You see three wide right there around where Chris Overland's running. Still side by side for second between Mollis and Gan. Gan gonna clear it, and now he's gonna go for the lead. The battle resumes. Isaac Gan, Seth the Merchant. I think these guys, oh, as uh, Gan gets a little more sideways than he wanted to off of four there. Yeah, you see, but he's going to try to chase the merchant up the racetrack here on the front straight. Oh, no, no, trouble! No, Contact! Save merchant. it, save it! He saved oh, he it! he saves it! How did he save that race car? Oh, what an incredible save. My Seth the Merchant made the save of ever. the year right there in front of our eyes. And he's not out of it. He's back no, to fourth. I I mean, I think the tires are, are obviously hurt, but he's he's still in it. He's still in the top five, and that could have that could have been the field right there. Incredible. Is there an award for that? Because there I, should we, be. That we, was we have absolutely to make an award. incredible. We have to make an award. That was unbelievable. Four wide going down the back stretch right now, going into turn three right now. They're going to think better of it, go three wide. Through three and four. All right. Oh man, yeah, you can see. God, they are stacked up here on oh. back. You see Connor yeah. Horn in the middle again. I can't. I can't tell you how many times I feel like I've said that tonight. Eddie Ball now trying to make it work. You see, this third lane just hasn't been in play all night for Brandon Cattell. Is he's almost into Eddie? Oh man, there's no. Oh, there they go. Backstretch. That's gonna take out all. Oh, three, four drivers. Got a string up. Oh, that's oh, a big one. No. Six or seven cars are involved in that wreck. Eddie that's... Kerner just got T-boned by Tyler Gary, and he he flipped three or four times. Oh man, that's not the bowling ball Eddie wanted to be. No, and uh, again they were just jockeying so hard. This was the battle for about seventeenth. Oh yeah, and... they were just three wide there, and Tucker Minter looked like he didn't he didn't realize that didn't quite give enough to Eddie there. And 
uh, Brandon realizes they're making contact, tries to slow up, and does the right thing there. What a what a good move by Brandon there. A lot of Man. awareness. Oh, and Mitchell yeah. gets hit from behind. Eddie's going to get a little bit of right front damage. And... Yeah, and I think even you hear Tucker right now talking about that staggered three wide. It's so hard to know uh, if you're three right there because obviously he can see Kerner to his outside. Oh, and, and Eddie. Oh, no, Eddie yeah. Kerner. Yeah, that's going to be Man. end of the show for Eddie. Oh, but he... Uh... It looks like he got a spare though, or a strike with that with that pin. <sighs> yeah, so as we got we got action on pit road now. Danny Hansen, Bobby Zelinski, and it looks like one other driver. No, two others. Jake Nichols and Dylan Alt. Uh, they have stayed out. Or Dylan Alt, oh. good. He's going to be waved around the pace car. But uh, yeah, Colin, yeah, looks like Colin Bowden. Yep, you're right. Colin Bowden, no. Jake Nichols, Bobby Zelinski, Danny Hansen. That's their. That's not a buffer. Jake? They're Jake not, Nichols, too. Unless we get yeah, cautions over and over again, they're not going to be able to hold on to the lead there. No, I mean, that that's 24 laps no on the way. tires. No that, way. That's going to be a lot. Well, uh, I believe that was only about... I, I'm showing on ATVO is about... Uh, six, they're they're six about or seven nine laps, laps on... Yeah. Seven laps green. Nine laps in total. Yeah. So... Now... So, we we did have we did have several drivers talk about um, going out there and getting a heat cycle on tires it actually tightens the car up a little bit. So yeah, and one thing I thought that was interesting was Corey Carpenter the other day. Obviously, I practiced restarts after a forty lap run, so um, luckily we won't have that tonight. Because I can tell you what that was. Uh, I was considering restarting in fourth gear if that if that tells you anything, but. Um, it seemed like Carpenter was pretty confident in the fact that the tires actually have more grip than you would imagine uh, if you run about 10, 15 laps or so. So I think Hanson, Zelensky, and these guys, they could they could hook up pretty well here on the short run, uh, at least taking off. But I, I can't imagine being even just a couple laps down on tires. They're not going to be able to hold on here. And, and how the field gets around them is going to be really interesting here because you have a you know obviously four cars up here that are on old tires. Everybody's going to be going high, going low, going everywhere uh, to try and get around them and get that track position quickly. And, you know, I said shout out to the hotel Wi-Fi. Shout out to probably my neighbors who I, I'm surprised <laughs> I haven't gotten at least three calls from the front desk right now telling me to shut up because <laughs> I'm sure this is I'm not a great neighbor to have in the hotel right now. Hold on, guys. I think did. Uh, did Kane possibly take two tires here? Let's take a look. Oh, yeah. So we got a lot yeah, of two tire stops Him and Connor Horn both got two tires there wow. yeah so that's uh, another wrench in the, the plans of isaac gan i mean here's my thought though if it so if you're kane where is he going to restart maybe fourth or fifth yeah he's going to restart fifth he he could possibly be the first car to get to the lead it might take him two or three laps and i mean if he gets a quick caution after five laps and he's still in the top three or four that's that's a net gain it is, yeah. I think it. I think it helps. Tires again. I mean, all the way up until there's only a couple laps to go, you need to keep coming down the road. Well, and I yeah. think he's helped by the fact that you can't. The we just haven't seen the very high line come into play. I don't think. I'm not sure if we'll see Keister be able to go up almost to the wall to pass these guys. So Kane being on the bottom, if he can just get a nose around them, you're exactly right, Lane. I think he can get up there and potentially get the lead before, uh, before the other guys catch him. Gonna have at least a 20 lap or max a 20 lap run here. It could be much shorter than that with these slow cars out front. Man, this is this is a long race. This is an, an, an enduro. <laughs> got, still got when does stage one in? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, 20 laps, stage one, yeah. All right, it's gonna be pretty, pretty important that playoff point. <laughs> Funny, we went almost the first 100 laps of green flag, have been riddled with cautions, but here we go. Pace green, truck in, green 20 flag. laps to go. Pretty good getaway from the cars on old tires. Ooh, oh, we're going four wide. This isn't going to work. Oh, man. They get a stack up there. Sends one car out into the wall. 
Is that Bob Bryant back there in the wall? Yeah, yeah. that is. It's the E-Racer Dodge. Man, those E-Racer cars are just not having a good night. I like the takeoff here from the old tires, though. This looks really oh, good. Trouble, oh, trouble, trouble, trouble! Oh, man. Oh, that's gonna be... That's gonna be that's big. big. Yeah. No caution yet. No caution yet. How? How? There's How? the caution. And that was Danny wow. Hansen that went around there in front of the field. Yeah, that's that would just... I. Uh, I don't know, guys. Just putting yourself in that position. I, I know it's a it's a shot to win if you get a bunch of yellows near the end, but uh, you know that that damaged Isaac Gann pretty good there. I think on his front end. Uh, it's let's see here. We got to get a TV angle. Oh yeah, it looks like Kane is on two two tires here. Just a lot faster right now. Uh, Gann gets into the back. Bobby Zelinski around. Bowden, oh. yeah, Zelinski, Demerchant. Oh, he maybe Demerchant escapes that somehow. My goodness. Oh, and oh man, Gillen. Gillen gets and Cooley involved. Look, yep. It's like Bob, it looks like our Bob Bryant might have got some contact. Bob Bryant. That was certainly a long wreck. Oh. You look at that. Can you you look at Kane Cook in that contact and? It's just so hard to judge how well those cars and old tires got through one and two. I'm sure Kane didn't expect the speed difference to be that much in three and four. Look at Bob Ryan get through this wreck. All right, let's... Oh, man, what a view that is. I stand corrected. I think he was thinking he was going to get damaged there, but somehow... Uh... He ends up, he would have been right in that. I mean, I know he loses a ton of track position, but I think he would have been right in the middle of all that um, if he stays there. So, able to avoid that pretty well. So, Jake Nichols in the race lead, guys. So, but uh, obviously Cook is able to escape. We see Gan... You mentioned he probably has some damage, but he has four fresh tires, so he is in a fantastic position right now to start on the front row. Yeah, I just don't, I don't have a lot of experience with the way that the current state of this damage model. Like, I, I, is yeah. that going to really hurt his car? Uh, we've got Demerchant back there who, you know, made that miraculous save. He's got a clean car. Maybe he can, you know, come back up through there. We've got uh, Jimmy Mullis. Looks like he's relatively clean oh no he's got a little right front damage as well so this is far 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 from over guys it is and you know this is what we were worried about here that you know as soon as we got to a position where we started have ca having cautions late all that short run saving uh, it kind of goes out the window i mean we've seen heck if you've watched the nascar coca-cola iRacing series here uh, recently, especially to end the season, uh, most of the races uh, kind of played out the same way. Long green flag runs, you get a yellow in the in the uh, kind of closing stages, and the, the rest of the race goes to chaos. And you know, a lot of those guys are in this race right now, so I think it's no surprise to see it playing out this way. Yeah, somebody's excited. Cattell's up to tenth. Uh, you know, he was our Firecracker 400 winner. He's no stranger to big events, Landon. We love big events. <laughs> That's we, a great quote. We love big events so much. You're the best. This is this is a really big event, I'd say. This is this is something you can really hang your hat on if you can somehow pull off the win here. Jake and I believe here at the moment the hard charger is Seth Demerchant in P five, so keep that in mind. Oh yeah. He, uh, Chris, starting here at the back. Chris Overland's also tied for that in P7. They're both up 31 positions. Oh, yep. 31, my goodness. I thought 21 was hard the other night. And then Cattell's in P10 with 27, so he's not too far off of them. All right. Uh, chat, you got to pick. Let us hear it. Yep, you got a little bit of time here before we take the green. Who you got? 
Our biggest loser as far as positions on track of our still running cars is Michael Cozy, who's down 19 positions in P25. I'm just really interested to see how Gan's car is. I, I know he is too. He's probably wondering the same thing. Well, at this point, you, you can't come in. You just got to gotta hope that those tires are going to make the difference. We'll see it right here. Pace truck is in. Jake Nichols gets a good launch outside, and the car behind him gets a little stacked up, but... P2 and P4 are going to work on that outside. Oh, we got a wreck going into oh. one, and that's oh, going to take man. out another four or five. Oh, oh man. No. That's a big one. Oh, my goodness. Big oh. wreck, yes. I, I am counting ten cars, maybe nine, who got through that without a problem out in front. Other than that, lots of damage. Wow. Somebody went in there full barrels ahead. They did not lift, and uh, yeah. they took out a few guys. And that's not... That's not what we want to see. You know, we don't want to see those wrecks on those restarts, but uh, this is exactly what Jake Nichols wanted to see. Yeah, you see Overland hard damage. I think uh, you see Cozy there. He has some damage. We see some smoke. I, I think that's just from a blinker uh, up in front. Oh, man, uh, we, we got to dissect this a little bit because that, I mean, that took out a good portion of the back half of the field golly look how many cars were in that and i think it's just a, an aggressive three wide move heading into one here uh, i'm looking at that right now what looks like what happens is colin keister starts to uh get up to chris overland and connor horn who are side by side and oh, man connor horn getting put three by uh or three wide here chris uh comes up in front of colin and just turns and that just takes hmm yeah. Takes out the field. <laughs> Not sure. You know, it's just ah, Colin had such a great run going. He's obviously going to be aggressive with these guys who are, you know, taking no or two tires in front of them. Just uh, you hate to get to see that. Did Bob Ryan get through that again? Uh, oh, no, he got clipped. Uh, no. <laughs> no, shoot. Yeah, got I was about this to is say, hard Greg, to survive this... 300, Brian. Yeah, it's turned into that. <laughs> Man, uh, you know, if we didn't have that first caution, it might have been it's clean to the end, but now things have uh, ratcheted up, I guess you could say. Oh, no doubt. And, I mean, just looking at all the names right here, Anthony Burroughs is in that, Aunt Alan Bowes, uh, Danny Hansen obviously already had some damage, Bob Bryant. Corey Carpenter, oh, yeah, Chris Corey. Overland, Dylan Alt looks like he he may have gotten tagged. Yeah, a Spencer lot of... E. Burns. Yeah, Corey, that's oh. too bad for Corey. He was looking forward to this one. Uh, and, you know, you got to be thinking for for Jake Nichols. He uh, he could have been back there in this if he would have pitted last time, or even originally when he wanted to pit. So this gets him uh, this gets him farther ahead, out of all of that riffraff. So, I still have uh, I still have a hard time believing this is a race winning call for Jake unless they too. have to continue doing this the whole time. Yeah, uh, one corner. But, I think he's done. Yeah, but you know this may keep him in the money. Obviously, the top five it still would bring home a payday, so it could be something that nets him something. But I just I really don't see this happen. I really think that um, Jimmy Mullis four tires a lot less damage on his car than what Isaac Ann has. I think he's in a fantastic position right now. And then obviously set the merchant, the next car that's on four fresh tires. I think he's in a good spot as well. Uh, oh man. But that, but that's the thing. If we can't go green, um, those tires on, you know, those guys on four tires, they can't really use that advantage um, that they have. So we'll just, we'll see what happens. Sure. I won't ask anybody for picks anymore because I think I asked people for picks and then all their picks just got crashed. So we won't do that again. Game of Jones in chat uh, brings up a good point. Uh, Jake was back in 25th to 30th before this. So it's the old Steve Latart strategy. If you're that far back, you got to do something. You got to just change up anything to try and get up there. Yeah. We got, uh, we got one of the drivers involved in that wreck there. Chris, how you doing? You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Took a couple hard hits. Um, and I've got to admit, I'm real frustrated right now. We had a nice, nice, nice run there going. What uh, what happened, man? I, I, I saw you and uh, Colin make contact. Like, what's your perspective there? 
Yeah, you know, we were carving through the field. I, I made a couple couple moves, four wide up top, you know, four wide in the middle. I always made sure everybody else had adequate room, but Colin seems to think that he can just drive into people. So it's it's the end of one of these things. I don't I don't mind. You know, we're racing for a lot of money and a lot more uh, pride here. So, uh, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure I showed what I could do right now. Oh, yeah, man. You, um, you did great. But it's a shame, you know, just poor racecraft ruins it for everybody. There's a lot of cars in that wreck, and I feel bad for everybody. I feel bad for Alan specifically. Um, he and I always seem to find ourselves in the same wreck. But, hey, man, we, we made some pretty good moves. We're yeah, you happy about that. led the race there. That was really cool. I think you proved... Uh... Man, you still got it. You're driving that thing, and uh, we've got Jake Nichols going to lead him back to the green flag. What a race it has been, Chris. Uh, yep, I appreciate it. I'm going to head out, guys. You guys enjoy the finish. Thank you for putting this on, Brian. This was amazing. It was really, really fun. All right. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Green flag. Nope. Yeah, Chris will move on. Ten laps to go here. Jake Nichols, another great restart. We'll see how they sort things out behind them. Isaac Gann and Mullis nearly made contact. This is for second. King Cook in a roll on the high side for third. And you can't forget Connor Horn. He's a part of this battle as well. Oh, we got a car on the wall down the back. It looks like it's Briar LaPrade, but uh, Jake Nichols holding on for right now. Oh, man. No, they're, they're four wide they're four back wide there now. They're able wow. to keep it straight. How about Jake Nichols still hanging on? Goes yep. an entire lap and still has a pretty decent lead on everybody. Oh, but here I, comes Mullis, four fresh tires. I think that's it, the advantage you see. Not a lot of damage on his car. Yeah, and, you know, Jake even has some damage on his car. It's amazing that he's able to hold on like this. Oh, he done a great job he'll bring it to the bottom side here in three and four it'll be eight laps to go across the stripe this time that is the schedule distance uh, of course that we're looking to end here at atlanta nichols it is mollus at the line by just a nose over isaac gann who's doing all he can to hang on and then of course behind them it's demerch oh, and it's man. cook that's the battle for fifth oh man jimmy's jimmy's oh. all over the back bumper right now and he's taking a look to the inside oh no contact for second and that's gonna allow jake nichols to retain the race lead i thought it was over for jake oh we got them oh. spinning back here oh they we save it oh. oh my goodness oh, Still they saving it. Oh, how did they save that we got one car into the wall we, we that's really need, there let's keep it green yeah. guys keep it green going down the front stretch keep it green guys keep it green track is clear green this flag is, is gonna stay out yeah, they're flipping through the grass, but here comes Jimmy Mullis. He has the tires, and he has the speed to the bottom here in three and four, all the way to the white line over Jake Nichols oh. to Merchant Close and Toe, but Mullis looking for the lead off of four. Oh, three wide off of turn four. Jake's not going to give this up, guys. He's, you know, in that outside lane. He can make ground. He can, you know, start to pull back Jimmy as he, you know, off the turn specifically. There he goes. And Nichols doing a great job. The Mopars flexing their muscles here. Nichols in first. So to you got a Toyota on the inside and Demerchant still. He's making up ground as they battle up here for the race lead again. Can, can Mullis clear him? It looks like he might be able to. Oh, the Coca-Cola Toyota to the top spot. Jimmy Mullis and Jake Nichols going to look to the inside. He's going to give it a shot. It as like Seth, Seth, Seth the Merchant is coming, guys. He is, and Nichols is going to slide off the corner. This is exactly what Seth needs. We got a big sack think, up for about ninth place right there. Someone almost lost it off of two. I think three wide now. For for Jake, his best play here is to let Seth go and see if you know Seth can possibly get up there and start battling Jimmy for the race lead. Merchant is fast. He doesn't have a bit of damage on that race car. That save could win him the race. Mollus is out front, though. Can Demerchant run him down? He's got four laps to do it. And does the caution fly? Seth course... Demerchant and Jimmy Mollus are on the same lap of tires, so working his way through the field. Yeah, Demerchant just recovering oh, from that way. spin. Here comes Ford time. He's up moving into the third spot. Yeah, here he comes. Making a move on Jake Nichols as we're keeping focused on this battle for the top two. But Three laps coming. to go now. 
merchant with the time makeup, but it's just a couple of hundreds. It's not going to be enough to run down Mollus if this pace continues. Alfala able to get by Nichols. That's for third. Oh, Nichols going to have to hold on. Got... They're sliding in the back. That's Freenage and the 48 of Brandon Cattell, but they save it. Coming to two laps to go this time by. It's uh, it's now or never for uh, Seth the Merchant and Ray Alfala if they want to even get a chance at winning this race. The yeah. Merchant leaving everything out there, 32-1, another 32-1 for Jimmy, but the Merchant is slightly faster, he's going to go to the middle, doing everything he can, sliding off the corner, but Mull is still hanging on strong out front. Half a lot to go till we get to the white flag, and if we could take that white flag, it's over, this race is going to end under green flag conditions. And Mollus gets their white flag in the air. One more trip around for the Coca-Cola Toyota Camry of Jimmy Mollus, who obviously was in the right place at the right time, has the tires, and it looks like he's got enough to hold off the Merchant into three and four for the final time. And Jimmy Mollus is gonna be able to do it Big events are where names are made. Jimmy Mullis is going to win the hard to drive 300 here at Atlanta. As they crash in the back, more cars on their roofs. Man. There you go. Set oh. the merchants giving a little love tap right there. Yeah. Wow, guys. I was on the edge of my seat that whole lot. <laughs> what I, a great race, Brian. I, Wonderful I, job, I forgot man. to even switch to the leader when he crossed the line. Man, what a what a race for Jimmy. Yeah, what a run. That was, uh, you know, he didn't necessarily have dominant speed, but he, he was just smooth, consistent, like we said, methodical, minded his own race. And uh, gonna take the checkered flag. Wow! Congratulations, Jimmy. This is this is such a big win for him. I know this means a lot. And uh, you know he's he's gone through a tough year, um, both on the sim and out. So I um, know he's just probably ecstatic right now. You got a surprise, don't you, Brian? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh yeah. We got a surprise, guys. So uh, I saved this just for Jimmy. Got a popper here. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> Jimmy. We'll do one more. Try to. There you go. <laughs> Sounded like the lightning strike that Josh had yesterday, but uh, what an incredible job by Jimmy. And I think what Chris pointed to earlier, racecraft. You think about racecraft and who the best in the business are at it. Look at your top five right now. Jimmy Mullis, Seth the Merchant, Ray Alfala, four-time champion dwc kane cook kane cook finishes up in four. jake nichols finishes in fifth an incredible yeah. call i know we said it wasn't a race winning move but it still nets him into the top five yeah um, great move race yep and you know that thankfully we've got you know prizes for second third fourth um you know down the line so uh, i just want to i want to give all these guys uh 500 bucks for putting on that show that was just incredible and we have our race winner in here now, Jimmy Mullis. Jimmy, you got a copy, man? Yes, sir. How about that? <laughs> did you <laughs> did you anticipate all that happening? <laughs> oh, absolutely not. Um, yeah, the whole you know last hundred laps, I was just trying to put myself in a position to even you know be in the conversation, and um, you know everything kind of just fell right for me. Um, I'm pretty speechless, man. Those last couple laps there were absolutely, you know, just stressful. insane. Uh, and yeah, stressful. I, I can't even find the words. Um, my heart was beating out of my chest and, um, yeah, to hold off somebody like Seth and Ray, I know we all had damage up there, but, uh, still to be able to do that is pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, it, it's awesome to win this event for sure. Yeah. Jimmy, man. Oh, you, uh, you know, you, you kind of survived, uh, got, you, you obviously had the pace to, you know, go up there, take the lead on the long run. We saw, we saw that we saw your, how methodical you were, you know, on that front stretch, I noticed like 
you would take it a little bit bit easy through there. You take a unique line. Uh, you you had an interesting uh, strategy, but then when you needed to to turn it up at the end, you did. And I I mean, talk about you know Seth there at the end. He was just coming. Yeah, I knew Seth was going to be the one to beat. Um, I know on that really long run we had, where we had uh, Dream Flag stops, he was by far the fastest car on track. And, um, you know, I hate that we didn't get to completely, you know, go green there and race it out because I was interested to see before those yellows happened, you know, how that was going to go. Um, but, yeah, he, he was flying. I knew I had to, you know, give it everything I had. And like you said, uh, had to turn it up at the right time. And fortunately, it all worked out. Yeah, you, you, we we saw the the save, you know, that Seth made in front of the field, and that was kind of crucial to how you kind of advanced up through there. Obviously, you had you had the speed, I think, to be like third, you know, easily, um, you know, and, and if and if it worked out right, you could you could easily go up there and win the race. But Isaac and and Seth, uh, Seth got together, and Seth made an amazing save. Can you talk about that moment? Uh, that was terrifying. <laughs> I thought my race was over in the center one and two. And, you got um, a little damage on the wheel, front man. there. Yeah, you got a little yeah, damage. Yeah, Did you get damage from that one? Yeah, that's, I think that's what it was from. Um, I know me and Isaac had a little bit of contact down the back uh, on that last run there. But, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was just from getting into the back of Seth. I was kind of anticipating him to gather it and get up to speed a little bit quicker than he did. But, uh, fortunately, you know, we didn't end up wrecking there. And, uh, I guess for us to come home one two after that whole situation is pretty pretty sweet. Yeah, I think Seth, you know, is happy he was able to hold on that one. But uh, you know, you've got the, one of the most beautiful paint schemes in, in the in the field right now. I'm looking at it. Um, we got it on the broadcast. Uh, can you can you talk a little bit about this too? Um, yeah. So actually, you know, JD painted this thing as he does with all my stuff. JD at JDR Graphics and. Um, he had did a car on NR2003 based off of a Kyle Busch type of scheme with the M&Ms, and um, he showed it to me, and I was like, I want that. Somehow, some way, make that into Coke, and he absolutely blew every idea I had out of the water, and, um, you know, this thing's got so much detail on it, it looks absolutely awesome, and I'm just glad I was able to get a win with not only him on the car, but Coke and um, Sunoco Sim Seats and, you know, everybody that's a part of the Richmond Raceway program, and um, yeah, it feels good, man. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to do it without Zach spotting me there at the end. He, uh, <laughs> as he said in the chat, best spotter in a. <laughs> yeah, I see him in the chat right now. He's saying best spotter in the business, I think. <laughs> wow. Um, just an incredible drive, incredible race. You know, we would have loved to have seen that go caution free and, you know, have the strategy play out that way. I was, I was kind of excited to see the, the restarts, um, but I mean, overall, I would have liked to see a little more green flag racing at the end, but I think the the outcome, you know, after after all that, it might not have changed. Seth might have gotten you. I don't know. But uh, you are the winner of the first annual Hard to Drive 300, and um, we hope to have many more of these in the future. So if you have any, I don't know if you have any final thoughts or anything, but thank you so much for uh, coming out to the event. Yeah, absolutely. You know, thanks to you and um, everybody that was a part of this whole deal. Uh, this is these events are really fun, and um, you know we don't really see them too often. And uh, you know, I'm just fortunate to be able to be a part of them, and I appreciate you know you allowing all of us to get on here on a what is this Friday night and <laughs> go to war. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's awesome, and yeah. um, like I said, just huge huge thanks to you, E Racer, everybody. Like I said, that was a part of making this happen, and. Um, I look forward to more events like this in the future. Man, look at this right side, guys. It's a little beat up, but uh, it doesn't matter now. I think Seth might have given you a little donut there. It was a congratulatory bump, but uh, good job, Jimmy. I'm so proud that you know uh, of how you drove and how that all played out. You did, you did phenomenal, and congratulations once again. Thanks, buddy. All right, we got anybody else? So we got King Cook. What's up, boys? Kane, what's up, man? How the uh, finished fourth on the day? How about yeah, that? Uh, I was feeling really good the first run. I was like, oh, I got over a second lead. We're gonna come in here, take tires. I'm gonna be able to save them and not have to, you know, work my butt off racing four time. 
and uh, Jake. <laughs> then I uh, just took a little bit of a wrong angle, not paying attention. Um, I mean, it, it wasn't like just a pure um, like idiot error. I mean, the car was on like you couldn't go full throttle on the straightaway, so you had to focus so much that you know when you're trying to enter pit road and you're checking to make sure if you can pit without announcing and you're just strained and you mess up like that and then i thought i was done because we went like 100 laps without a caution i was still in like 40th oh man and then someone someone messed up real bad and uh ended the flow of the race and i gotta say thank you to whoever that was because that gave me a chance i had to drive <laughs> through a lot of the field and i i was like right about to be top 10 when the caution came out when i took two tires i think that was the best call I could have made for the situation. I didn't mean to get into Danny there. I thought he was going to run the outside um, once we were already there. And then he, like, kind of stopped and wasn't really on the bottom. But he was, like, a half car width above it. And it, I don't know. I mean, you, some of you know what it's like when there's fresh tires behind you and there's no tires in front of you and it's awkward. And I hate it for everybody that... I messed up. I mean, Isaac had a great day going. I know that pretty much killed his car and his chance at winning money. So I feel really bad about that and all those guys. But I guess it worked out in the end with fourth. But man, that was a long day. Yeah, a little bit longer than uh, your typical races on iRacing. 300 miles. Uh, you know, we we typically go, you know, maybe 134 laps, and we did almost 200. Oh yeah, it uh, and it was crazy. So. I didn't see many people making proper use of it out there. It wasn't dynamic track. Like you weren't able to just go faster purely because the track was cool or anything. But right. when the rubber kept getting ripped off the track and moving around, like this tire just loves rubber for tire wear purposes. So everybody else seemed to keep doing the run the white until they move up to the middle when their car starts feeling off. And I felt like I was one of the only people that was really just trying to run wherever the, the rubber buildup was the whole race, almost like running the cushion. and. It worked great for me the first run. Um, uh, it was working great the rest of the race, too. But, I mean, obviously, if I'm in 40th and 40 seconds behind wherever I was going to be, it's kind of hard to keep tabs on what's going on with the race. Yeah. And uh, we're going to pull set the merchant in real quick. But uh, is there anybody you want to, uh, you know, maybe thank? Is there any spotters or crew chiefs I helped out tonight? Um, I was riding solo tonight. Uh, thank you for Jake for letting me know that one accident when someone decided to pit without letting anybody know before turn three in front of the field that oh. I had no damage. But besides that, just thank you to you guys for putting it on. Great broadcast. Love the ticker. And yeah, I messaged you about the music. I thought the music for the <laughs> event was really good. And just the whole production, uh, you did a great job for what you could with uh, the box we're putting on here right now for giving us a raceable product. Yeah, and just thank you for the it. event, man. Like these are such joys to look forward to. Perfect compliment to DWC having big events every once in a while, and I look forward to the next one. Yeah. Sorry again to the field. Oh, but you're all good, man. Uh, we're probably gonna try to make this an annual event. You know, it's a perfect timing. You know, you guys are all done with uh, Coke series. Uh, we got Seth the Merchant in the booth. Seth, you are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, man. Oh, I hey. what? save of the year uh definitely <laughs> candidate maybe yeah. maybe definitely in into in three and four there yeah it was pretty good uh i mean props to everybody for not running me over because i was like probably 20 mile, 20 miles an hour slower sliding in the middle of the track in front of the whole field and somehow we all gathered it up and uh kept going yeah and uh you know uh a great paint scheme great driver a great battle with isaac gann there i think you guys you two were the class of the field and you were showing it there at the end and we didn't quite get that epic battle i think you know we we had a caution there uh, a little bit later on that that kind of ruined your amazing battle <laughs> with isaac but um then we had a round of stops like there's just so much going on and i uh, couldn't quite get back to the lead there yeah i think i, I just needed a little bit more green flag there uh a caution coming to around 40 to go right as I was passing Keister for the lead. I think uh, if it would have stayed green there, I, uh, I think I had a really good shot because I, I had saved my tires pretty much that whole run, and it was pretty much the perfect distance for the, the pace I think I was setting. Um, and then through the short runs, I think Isaac was the fastest out of all of us for those those short runs there, but I think he got caught up in that wreck a little bit, and then you know he got into me, and uh, I don't even know what happened, but we somehow got back by him again, and 
just uh, I, th I think we were we we're probably four or five laps away from me and Jimmy be having a side by side finish there. Yeah, uh, for the one. it would have been close. I, 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 I was slightly reeling him in, but it wasn't by much. But I think right at the end, it started getting bigger and bigger. We and, were uh, we were looking at the lap times, and it was about five hundredths a lap, or you know, it, it was a few hundreds a lap. And I was just thinking, man, if this is five laps longer, like Seth, we're gonna have like a classic Atlanta and. You know, I, as much as I, I love Jimmy, I kind of wanted to see a photo finish. <laughs> yeah, and it was with, with like three important. to go, I, I slightly changed my lineup, and I think that's what did it. I just uh, did it a little too late, and I, I was just, I didn't get through traffic as fast as he did through uh, Kane and Jake there, and the gap was just too big. But, I mean, <laughs> I'll take a 36 to second place finish. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Um, well, it, you know, you've got Horizon on the quarter panel. Anybody else you want to think? Uh, just JD uh, for painting the cars. I know he, he did a lot of cars in here, a lot of really good looking cars. And then uh, just you guys for putting on the race, uh, everything you've been doing. These events are my favorite things to do on iRacing. So just thanks for you guys. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming. And we appreciate all your you know, help you know, during those practice sessions. I had no idea it was going to be like this uh, at the end of the day. <laughs> but uh you know, we did a, a few runs together and really enjoyed it. Um, and I, I'm gonna, we're gonna make a commitment to doing this every year, I think, because this is just too good not to. Yeah, dude. All right. Well, also, Seth the Merchant, you're gonna win our Hard Charger Award for getting those 34 positions. Good job on that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and you know, you got 300 i racing credits. Not too bad. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, use the Black Friday discount code and i'm gonna renew renew my account here awesome well we're glad that you know it's not all or nothing and you do walk away with some prizes that's really cool um we also got some a couple other guys in in the chat here we got bobby Zelinsky, connor horn um who wants to go first <laughs> bobby you there what's up because you you had the speeding penalty uh when you were you, uh, dude, I think you practice more than you let on because, like, you were you flying through the field. Um, all I did was like uh, about a couple hours um, before the the qualifying because I didn't want to go into this race like super serious because I wanted to have fun, you know. Yeah. Put in a lot of practice and you do all these runs, you tend to like take it more seriously than fun. And this was clearly something I just wanted to have fun with. And I did some runs in the warm up um, before the race started, and I got a good feel of it, like. And, and kind of got the idea of how to, to make the tires last. And that's just, I just wanted to come out, have fun, hopefully get some long runs. And I was really surprised that we were so good on long runs because I, I just never am. Um, <laughs> but, you know, race didn't end well, but it's fine. I had fun. Yeah, you, you definitely showed us uh, earlier in the race. We'll go back to that on the replay. You know, you you were you were making your way up through there. And um, I, was, I was saying, you know, I think you... Who'd you take the lead from? I think it was, was it Colin? Or yeah, in the se in the second of the two fifty lap runs or whatever, in that first hundred laps, I, I took I forget who I took it from on the the first one because right when I got to everybody, they started pitting. So um, yeah, it was the second run I got by Colin. But yeah, I just I figured something out, I guess, <laughs> to keep the the rear tires on it mainly because I was able to <laughs> just motor people like down the straightaway, especially down the front stretch, which was. Just I've never experienced that before, like in a race. So yeah, and, and it was just such an ebb and flow of like, you know, you had guys on potentially once, you know, one stop longer strategy, and then three stops, four stops. We were trying to figure it out, uh, and then you had Bob Bryant who was going like 63 laps on a tank or something silly. We just we couldn't keep track of it all. So you'll you'll see that in the broadcast. It was there was so much going on, and uh, we probably missed a few things, but. Uh, you got anybody you want to thank, Bob? Of course, virtual racing school on the car, like always, you know, the best place to go to learn how to drive and get better and improve. And uh, you got to thank you for putting this on because I, I mentioned it in qualifying. Like, <clears throat> I, I didn't get to, to race these things ever. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I watched the series a bit even before I was on iRacing with guys like Ray and, and you know, and you know, racing these cars. So... It was cool to, to race them again. It's cool to have horsepower again. Not not very much downforce. Um, and yeah. just the tire saving and everything. It was a good it was a good time. I had a good time. Thank you uh, good. for putting it on. Awesome. Well, we're glad you and had a good time. everybody involved. Yeah. I want to just thank you. I got to thank everybody involved. 
Well, by you, we mean everybody. I mean, Blake and Josh and, um, you know, a lot of guys have just been so committed to this throughout the week and we're not really, you know, we're not getting paid. We're just, uh, I think I'm in, only in the hole about like a couple hundred bucks now with all the subs and stuff. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> and, um, you know, congratulations, great run. I think that that's a confidence booster for sure. You know, to drive the way you did. Um, we got Connor Horn also in the, in the booth. Uh, Connor, you there? Uh, yep. Awesome. Well, Blake, you, you take care of this interview. I, I've been talking too much. <laughs> All right, I can I can get you there, uh, uh, Brian. But the one thing, Connor, <laughs> I feel like every time I looked at your race car, I was having to say, "Oh, look, Connor Horn up the middle, three wide." Just uh, you're able to make some moves there in the middle in the middle of the racetrack. It just, but it just seemed every time we saw that Outback Steakhouse machine, you you were, but but uh, somehow between two cars. Yeah, we were we were really wheeling back there, especially like. I was around like eight, like tenth to like fourteenth, especially like the, the third quarter of the race. It was, it was really intense back there. The start of the race was pretty good. I think it went, uh, I think I gained around eleven spots before we came on our strategy. We're gonna do four stops, pit every thirty nine laps. It was working out pretty well. Uh, uh, me, Tucker, Andrew, a few others that were on the same strategy. Tucker was gone. If that race went green all the way, I think Tucker had it won and. I think we would have had a real good shot at a top five, maybe hold on to the top three. Ultimately, the yellow came out at an uh, uh, unfortunate time. Uh, we got stuck about where we started, a bit better than we started, but it was still a bit frustrating. We kind of backed the square one there, and it was really a struggle. It, it was odd in the back of that pack there, because at that point, it was a one-stop race. Uh, a lot of us, it's like the beginning of a run, we were all of us were struggling to get to the bottom on a short run and then when we realized the run was going long everyone was trying to race to the top line it was a dynamic track but when you, you know when to go you got to kind of get to the middle line you can't really get up to the front like that on the bottom because it was especially because of how congested it was so we had to make a lot of moves to the middle uh, another yellow came out kind of in the same spot and that's when the racing really got crazy well that 40 lap run like 116 the 156 whatever it was uh hard racing uh i think uh i'm trying to see if i'm trying to remember who was even back there blake i was battling with blake briar cattell was back there i think Bercurio. uh a lot of guys that were we were all struggling for grip and we were struggling to get by one another i had to cut blake a, a lot of breaks we were racing very aggressively but it was a uh, it was it was fun at the same time it, I, i'm not gonna lie i was frustrated with him uh, in the moment and i really did cut, i probably almost uh, almost accidentally on purpose wrecked them, but it, it, in the end, it was it was pretty fun. It was fun wheeling it, and then uh, around 20 to go, however long to go it was, uh, we got up to about 10th or so, and the crew chief, because uh, we saw the left sides on a short run weren't wearing too badly, uh, we th I, we figured if we could get some track position, this is our moment, and we went for the two tires, uh, along with Cade, a few people stayed out, and then those last two restarts, uh, both times, Colin he tried shooting in the middle when there wasn't a gap. The first time, he hit my bumper. And then the second time, I th he tried gunning at middle for a hole that wasn't there, and he unfortunately took out Chris. That was unfortunate to see. And we got really lucky with that. I think Guy Racing's netcode saved us there. So a lot of cars got messed up. Then the, the incident with Kane and Danny, we were able to get through that, kind of just stood in the middle to avoid that. So that was really rough. So at that point, we're just going all out, trying to go to the middle, trying to make any move we can. If we got to go, if, if they, if there was an opportunity to go five wide, I was going to the apron. It was like, it was that sort of move. So, and then that final run, I think it was 10 laps, just holding on in the middle for dear life. I think Cattell got into the back of me a number of times. I was able to hold on. And then there was an incident behind me at some point where it really sent those guys back. And I realized uh, I got the I did that's the gap I needed. I was able to kind of try to chase down the guys ahead of me, uh, specifically Isaac, who was having a lot of damage. Uh, I was able to hold off Blake. I got by someone at the end there. I don't remember who it was. I think it was, I think it was, I think it was Isaac. I got by Isaac, and out of four, I almost got Jake at the line, but it wasn't meant to be. <laughs> I know I went on for a while there, but all in all, I'm, I, I'm really happy to get sixth. I mean, that was amazing. That was so much fun. Awesome, man. Yeah, you, you had a great run and. Uh, this is what this event's all about opening it up to everybody to you know race against some of the the top competition on the service and i think that 
we all want more opportunities like that, you know, to, to race against guys like Ray Alfala or Jimmy Mullis or, you know, just all the, all these big names, Bobby Zielinski that, that came out to, to run this race. I think we need more of this. So, um, and, and guys like you coming out here, you're the first guy that doesn't have a pro strike. So, um, congratulations. Great, great run. And this is like, this is like the underdog story. I think that, uh, you know, everybody who is looking to see. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate it from you. I mean, it, yeah, there's so many, and like you said, the big names to be able to battle with them side by side, especially Ray. I mean, it's just, it's kind of surreal to, it's kind of, it's just kind of shocking, honestly, to be around these guys and have the pace to somewhat hang with them on short runs for the most part. I feel like I had some long run speed. I mean, it was, it was crazy. Uh, I was, I know I was, uh, far, uh, and Andrew in the 88, we battle a lot. It seems like we're always next to each other in one of these races. Obviously, Blake, uh, like you said, Zelensky, Jimmy, we didn't really get to Jimmy, but we, we raced pretty cleanly. I feel like Seth was obviously fast. Kane's, Kane Cook's Kane Cook. I mean, he's hard to beat any day. It just, you know, the delay list goes on. It's a stacked field, and it, it's a stacked field for a reason. And to be able to get a sixth place out of, uh, with especially with the way we were able to hold on for sixth place uh, against the field that we had to uh, hold off on that final restart, I mean, it's really special. It's really, it really is. Awesome. Well, that's Connor Horn. Thank you, Connor, for coming out and hope to see you in the next one uh we'll be you know we said earlier this is going to be an annual event i think this is perfect timing uh we'll probably have a couple i think we'll have a couple more obviously eraser putting this on uh but you know i've got a couple ideas for possibly uh uh you know maybe an event every three to four months i think that that's a, a a good amount of time to let people you know prepare for the next one get ready get hyped up i i'm i'm really looking forward to you coming out to, to more of these yeah i'm definitely going to be in it for whichever the next one is whether it's a road course short track super speedway i don't care i'll i'll be i'll, <laughs> I'll right. be there i'm ready for anything and a, a quick shout out to uh brandon mckissick we're not teammates but we talk a lot uh i was kind of using him to i was kind of we were trying to uh, help myself a little bit to learn a bit off of him and i feel like that kind of worked he didn't get the finish he probably deserved but it was fun racing him and uh uh, and obviously, especially huge <laughs> uh, shout out to Jeremy Miller. He was spotting me the whole race, and he was the one that made that two tire call. Really, I wasn't really feeling it, but he made the call, and it worked out amazingly. So, a huge shout out to him, and uh, I'm just amazed that I'm here. There you go, Landis two tire call. He wanted to see it, and uh, you know, Connor Horde made the best of it. Um, you know, I, I just want to, you know, let wh whoever we've got a few people in the channel. We got. Um, we got Josh, Jimmy, Connor, Blake, and AJ. We got a few people muted, but any any closing thoughts? Like, I feel like I don't I don't want the broadcast to end, but uh, can, can we just talk about how incredible it was to watch forty three of the best drivers on iRacing go out there for the first hundred laps run green flag racing, do almost two full cycles of green flag pit stops mm -hmm. and then just go in and battle and brawl to get everything they can. How incredible that was to see that happen. Yeah, uh I mean I was expecting it to go green. Um maybe not that long though, because it's so difficult to manage the, the traffic you know, you know, coming on and off pit road, uh, we had, we had three different strategies, really. We had a three stop, four stop, five, potentially a five. No, it was maybe two, two stops, three stops, four stops. I don't know what Bob Bryant was strategy he was on, but it was maybe the, uh, hail Mary hope for a caution strategy. But, um, we definitely had two strategies, uh, that just really shuffled things up and just, uh, that was so cool. Yeah, it absolutely was. And, you know, you says you want to make this an annual event. Well, <laughs> you know my phone number. Ring me up. I'm right back here. <laughs> All right, cool. Hey, Bottom Splits in the chat. I hope they had a great broadcast. Um, you know, we we just want to uh, we want to do this more often. It's just it's so cool. And, I, Blake, I, I would have loved to have seen what you could do out there, man. I, what, what are your closing thoughts? You got any? 
Well, obviously, yeah. Um, as much as, you know, I appreciate you guys having me up here. Uh, it means a lot to me that, you know, I can just be in the booth and, you know, be able to help kind of move the race along. And, you know, I, I'm just like you guys. I'm having fun and just sitting here talking about it. I hope everybody out there enjoys it um, as much, if not more than we did. But, uh, yeah, first thought, I wish I was in the car because um, I had so much fun the other night. Um, there is that part of me, that competitive side of me right now that's just really, I won't say frustrated, but just kind of, you know, it'll always be what if, you know, if I, if I was in the car tonight, how we could have done, uh, no, I would have started in the back, but I, I think we could have, we could have had a chance to move forward here in a, in a really strong field. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, first off hats off to you, Josh, everybody at eRacer to put this on because obviously, you know, there's a reason that you know guys like jimmy mullis win these races and you know they talk about how they're sweating and they're shaking and they're they're stressed out you know trying to compete um and you know these are guys that compete at the top ladders uh, of anything in this is because of how impactful these events can be um how special they are and how well run they are um but simply put this was just a racers event you know, everything from top to bottom was all about just giving the drivers something that was fun, something that was challenging. And, you know, I think you're going to you're you're going to get the brunt of it. You're going to see a lot of guys reaching out and, and saying their thanks. And it, it's all very well uh, deserved because everything about this was great. The racing was awesome. Uh, got some yellows there at the end. But I mean, that's just that's competition. That's the way things go. But um the way everything was done, the preparation, the setups, all the practices that were available, um, did a really nice job, and it, it makes it, you know, cool to to be able to to be a part of it. So thanks to you, Brian, and uh, yeah, I, I know this is always the thing, but I'm just ready for the next one. <laughs> yeah, me too, and big thank you to eRacer. Obviously, you know it it didn't start out an eRacer event, but uh, certainly finished that way. And Landon, Parker, Josh, you guys are awesome, and you know, I, I I definitely want to work more with you guys, and I think this is this is we we actually already have like a bunch of chatter on Twitter about like the next hard to drive three hundred potentially like what combination that might be. I'd love for this one to potentially stay with the NASCAR ranks, but you know maybe we uh, obviously we can venture out to different tracks and we can. You know, we can set up other events with different cars. I think, uh, you know, maybe rebrand those things a little bit differently. Uh, somebody said the the Lotus 49 at Daytona on Twitter. I think that was Seth Eggers. <laughs> There's a lot of ideas out there floating around now. This has got everybody's uh, gears turning. I tell you what, we still got a uh, high horsepower, low downforce Gen 6 in there, that legacy... Uh... The Chevy, the Fusion, the Camry, it's still out there. So, of course, that's always always an option yep. if you want to cr crank up the horsepower. Yep. And, that's uh, exciting. We I like horsepower. We need more like horsepower. Horse yeah, we like I love horsepower. horsepower. I mean, you saw, like, we, we've had a lot of guys comment, like, the harder to drive that it is, that it is, the cleaner the racing is. Obviously, we didn't see that, like, you know, right at the end, but... These guys are going for 500 bucks. You can't blame them. We're going to have some wrecks. We're going to see some cautions. It's it's part of the game, you know, and we we saw an amazing battle at the end. Um, um, and I'm really proud of all the drivers. Just want to give a shout out to everybody who came out tonight. I know not all of them had the nights that they wanted to have, but every single one of you guys contributed to such a successful broadcast, a successful race. We tried to I think we tried to feature everybody, you know, at least once. But, uh, you know, we're, we apologize if we missed you. Liam Brotherton had an amazing scheme. I don't think we called his name much uh, to see him fly by. Um, but, yeah, uh, everybody, thank you to all the drivers. Because without the drivers, this doesn't happen. Like, there's there's no way that this is as cool as it is without the drivers. Like, uh, we, we, we had some of the best. And having a full field like this guys that know what they're doing who practice put in effort we really really appreciate you guys for coming out and even if you hated it if you didn't like the setup you didn't like this that the other thing it was cool it was it was a blast from the past and and i i just that that's really my closing thoughts is like 
thank you so much to the drivers because um, without this, it's nothing. Like we're we're just looking at a blank track. <laughs> Very true, and that's a good point. You know, couldn't do it without the drivers. So, thank you guys. And and good drivers too, because like there's very few people who can actually do this or very few people who can drive these cars the way we're driving them, um, right now. And Blake, you know, Blake, you're one of them. Um, I, I'm, I'm excited for the next one. Blake, you gotta, you gotta get yourself out of the booth for the next one. I'm calling it right now. <laughs> yeah, I, guess, I guess so. We'll have to, well, In uh, you know, I'll, I'll have to make sure I'm not working next time. How about that? You can be our in race reporter. There, there we go. <laughs> Well, I'd like to do more interviews, but um, we're, I think we're kind of out of interviewees, if that's a word. Yeah, I think everybody's kind of uh, said their piece that wanted to come up here, so. Yeah. All right. Well, AJ, you, you know, any closing thoughts from Pit Road down there, you Pit Road reporter? Yeah, uh, everybody's packing up their, their haulers <laughs> and they're heading on out, uh, cleaning up their scrap bumpers they got laying around. Yeah. And, uh, pretty awesome event um, <laughs> i think you guys summed it up pretty well um can't wait for the next one. Oh boy i'm awesome. bringing out my fire suit from sweat still i you know i i'm still wearing the same <laughs> same I, I only put on this shirt just for the broadcast so i'll you know I'll show the webcam one last time thank you guys again um but yeah this is the same shirt i only put it on for the broadcast but this thing definitely needs to go in the wash because like i was just sweating <laughs> out those last few laps for all those guys i was putting myself in the driver's seat i thought i was behind the wheel there for a moment i just went radio silent there i think the last five laps <laughs> okay cool well uh we're gonna raid somebody if you have any suggestions put it in the chat we got 90 people watching uh if i try to load twitch on this computer it'd probably take 10 minutes so i'll let you guys decide that yeah. we got, see if any drivers are streaming we got uh justice anthony alfredo moonhead oh, hey, anthony got anthony tried to run in the race dog, so. dog, yeah we gotta we gotta we gotta raid somebody who tried to run this quick one. Uh, quickly yeah. here brian donnie said in the uh, donnie's asking in the chat who won best car talk about the paid skis yeah we're so oh we didn't even talk about that that's a good good point donnie um oh you know what let's uh let's show you guys i think we got some finalists uh before we rate anybody donnie you're the best thank you so much uh, this is we wanted to cover this before we went off air <laughs> um but we do have some finalists um these are not all the finalists but uh we have some in mind so let me pull that up really quick um and finalist right here we've got that looks like adam gillen's machine there let me pull it in so it's full screen there we go all right oh and we got tucker minter also a finalist, I think, for the diecast. Really great scheme as well. Uh, Donovan. Ooh. Ooh, oh, next one. This is very impromptu, but we've got Anthony Alfredo's, I think, was nominated. Uh, oh, look at that. Blake McCandless, Parker Kligerin in the running. Uh, that's a That's a beautiful scheme as well. Have you think any racer today? <laughs> we got Bob Bryant's machine. That is definitely a beautiful car. Uh, we we have to put that one in the running. Make sure to visit eracer.gg for events like this in the future. All right, there, you, Donovan Strauss, you are a finalist for the diecast. We, we're going to set up a vote. So, um, you know, we're not sure exactly. We haven't finalized all the details about the vote, but there will be a vote between all these finalists um and not every, i don't think i have a screenshot of every last car um that i wanted to be a finalist we got liam brotherton also nominated and presley sora i think is a finalist as well yep 
excuse me. And oh, I forget the driver of this car, but DJ Harris I, Designs. I think Nate Stewart. I Nate think. Stewart. All right, cool. And I think we had uh, one more that I wanted to showcase. I think that's that's on Discord, actually. One more. But, you know, the, we have a couple, I think, that we have to definitely... Like, we, you had to put it in before qualifying, so that kind of narrows it down a little bit. Uh, so let's go ahead and... Did you get uh, Liam's in there? Yep, we got Liam's, and I've got... The 98? Yeah, I'm just trying to pull up one, one more. I think it was... It wasn't uh, something... So shout out to D Natters. He did all the screenshots that you saw there. This one was not a screenshot from D Natters. Uh, not quite nearly as good, but... Ah, uh, here we go. Look at that. The Mode Media House, number 24. That's another uh, finalist as well for the diecast. So we'll be in touch with uh, regarding that, and we'll, we'll set out a vote, um, you know, amongst... We might have to narrow it down a little bit to the top five, but, um, you know, and, and if you didn't see your paint scheme on here, not totally out of the running, um, but I think we highlighted some pretty great schemes and a lot of great painters, um, and... Uh, I think Ace had some paint schemes, amazing. Um, he's definitely going to be highlighted in this voting. Um, so thank you guys for for doing like this. This made the broadcast like a million times better. So thank you for all the painters out there who dedicated so many hours to putting on such an amazing show, like with just the paint schemes themselves. I feel like I'm talking way too much, but uh, let's go ahead. <laughs> We've, we're going to raid somebody now, I suppose. <laughs> uh, let's see. Who do we got? Is Alfre You said Alfredo was streaming? Yeah, but he's not doing iRacing right now. He's playing another game. Hmm. Okay. Well, I saw uh, Blake Near streaming. Oh. He, uh Try qualifying for the event. He did. Let's uh, let's go ahead and see what Blake's up to. All right. Go ahead and pull up Twitch chat. All right. Yes. Yeah, Blake near. All right. Thank you guys again for the people in the chat. Uh, we didn't. We had so many strategies and things going on that we didn't really get to interact with the chat as much as I wanted to. But um, you guys are awesome. So thank you again, and uh, we're going to be back soon with another event. So, guys, you ready? Go see Blake Near. Yes. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody who tuned in. You guys are what make this these events so worth broadcasting. Thank you, guys. Yeah, and a lot of our viewers were actual drivers, actual painters, actual, you know, uh, it's all a nice, really, really nice community that we, we got going here, and Look forward to more. Um, all right, Blake, we're gonna Blake, we're gonna rate another Blake. <laughs> this guy's got a good name. He does. All right, Kimmy, Emma, Dean Adders, Jake, uh, Clauberts, Be Bearded Sim Racer, Ryan. Thank you so much. We'll see you all soon. Liam Brotherton, everybody in the chat. Thank you, all the drivers, all the, everybody came out to watch. Let's go see Blake. He's running Homestead right now. Congratulations to Jimmy again. Yeah, good job, Jimmy. This is Jimmy's night. All right, 61, 62. Thanks, Roberts. We'll see you next time. All right, we ready? We got 64 viewers. Let's go. Three, two, one. Good job, guys. Thanks. Let me know when we're yeah. off here. <laughs>